This is a HeadGum Podcast. Minnesota and Utah. Two of the coldest states in the U.S., these frigid, landlocked territories could not be further from the temperate, coastal climate of the Mediterranean. Yet they're the home states of two of the biggest names in Mediterranean American food, Bruce Raidman and Robert Wickland, who met at Occidental College, a tiny liberal arts school located in Los Angeles. Upon graduating in 2005, the duo considered the woeful dining options available to starving students, noting a dearth of affordable takeout that wasn't gut-bustingly caloric, even in health-crazed Tinseltown. So, drawing on a beloved street food from their European travel experiences, Raidman and Wicklin dreamed up an accessible concept specializing in doner kebab, establishing their first restaurant in L.A.'s gentrifying Eagle Rock neighborhood. The eatery quickly found its fandom, even given the city's existing abundance of authentic Armenian, Greek, and Persian restaurants, and saw a quick expansion throughout the Golden State and the American West. Today, with locations in nine states stretching from California to Virginia, the health-conscious but affordable concept is part of a new frontier of fast casual. And while its name may seem repulsive at first, it's meant playfully to invoke the meat-roasting rod standard in Mediterranean cooking. But when you taste its menu, are you likely to swallows? This week on Doughboys, Spits. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, Captain Munch, Oops All Stairs. The spoon man, Mike Mitchell. <laughs> because my home is all stairs. You get a lot of stairs there. How, what was the official count? Was it 54 stairs? I do have 54 stairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. It is a lot of stairs. I mean, to be, to be, you, you have a very narrow home. It's like Actually, a classic, like, kind of row house. There are a few more outside that I didn't count that are probably, it probably puts it close to like 57, 58 stairs. You might have 60 stairs. I which... might have 60 stairs. If I, do I have to count every stair? I think I do. We might have to do a recount of stairs, yeah. which for this dumb podcast will be one of our greatest episodes. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a lot of stairs. Mm-hmm. Look, what do you want from me? I, you know, what, what, I got stairs in my place now. Uh, well, I wasn't a trust fund comedy kid. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's like you, you remember, like you, there would be like a person that was like zero percent funny. Yeah. And then they were like a mess. And then they were like, oh, like, and they didn't do, have a day job. I had a day job. You had a day job. It's like, a, yeah, it's like this, this guy, this kid, Matt Gober. And like, Mac, what's Matt Gober up to? Oh, yeah. He just is like, Fucking... just does improv and sketch and he does like stand up open mics. All right. But what's like, how does he make money? He's like, yeah, I don't know. Fucking just Gober. Around. Yeah. You said like, Gober would do a show and like, yeah. He gets zero laughs, and then he like fucking puke in his fucking pants. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then you'd see he'd he'd take his pants off because he thought he had to he had to take a shit, yeah, a nervous shit. But then he puke inside and, of them. And then he puke inside of his pants. And he'd be like, "How does Gober make a living?" And then you find out there's like Gober Pharmaceuticals is like a billion dollar company, <laughs> just living off of daddy's dime doing <laughs> Gober Pharmaceuticals bad comedy is like a in Wayland, LA. Uh, what is it? Wayland, Wayland Utani. Utani. Yeah. <laughs> Financing expeditions to Jupiter's moons. Um, <laughs> I was never a little trust fund. No, comedy you and boy. I were both. The, we're, we were both working our way, Hard like, sustaining working ourselves. <laughs> Putting on my page jacket, heading oh. up to CBS every day. <laughs> <laughs> Learning yeah, the did. pits of the Simpsons PA world. That's what I was gonna say. Gassing up that golf cart so you could drive around the Fox lot. Not easy. Not easy. Yeah. Not easy at all. You, hey. ever, you ever ask for any handouts? <laughs> no. <laughs> I never no, we didn't I, ask for handouts. We didn't ask for <laughs> handouts. We fucking we we were we we I was not a once I got out here, Wags, it was all over. My parents stopped returning calls. It was done. Yeah. I, hey, I was working I was working in the video game industry and I was that was a full time job. It was more than full time job. I was pulling sixty hour weeks trying to make bad video games. And I was as I was doing comedy on the side. It's a fucking we, So all we, you we listeners were working out for a there. Start, you start did you start from nothing? We and started from we, nothing. We started from the bottom. We started from the now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> built it all yourself. Now we're here in a different part of the bottom. <laughs> Yo, everybody listen out there, you too could have stairs someday too. You just got to put your you got to put the axe to the I grindstone. A, follow a, your dreams, you can I have, have stairs. A, I have a question. Yeah. You think young people today have a work ethic? Yes or no? 
I well, mean, they, that's the problem. I they feel know like, what it takes? I feel like no one wants to work anymore. That's yeah, just no my take. Yeah, no one wants to work. Me, Weiger, Kim Kardashian, the yeah. three of us feel the same yes. way. I want to have. I want to have. St- oh, I come. On, I don't have stairs. I don't do. I don't work, but I want them. I don't know. Gober Shut fucking up. do fucking. Yeah. Stop coveting other people's stairs. Is his name Gober. Gober. Yeah. Yeah. Gober. I know Gober. Mac Gober. We know Mac Gober. Yeah. Mac Gober. Him and uh, who's the other guy? Mark Doofson. They had a two man <laughs> team. <laughs> Well, this is the thing. Uh-huh. Gober is canceled. We didn't want to talk about that's it. That's the we didn't want to bring him up. Doofson's still uh mm. Doofson's doing great. Doofson's doing great. But we don't like Doofson, yeah, but he's doing great. He's doing great. Uh I'm asking him for help, but but yeah, Gober Gober's kind of faded away. Gober did like he did like a, a sketch variety show of like is like places around the world, and then he was like acting as different people yeah, from around the world. And we were very, like uh, the test ooh. show, we were like, this is not good. This is really iffy this territory. Is really bad. You shouldn't do this. And he was like, it's me, Gobra. I'm going to yeah. pull this off. And he fucking was yeah, it canceled. Didn't, it didn't work out. Um, it's like teaching improv in like Omaha now. <laughs> Set up his own theater. Uh, that that roast was sent in from Joseph. Joseph writes, hi, Doughboys. I hope you're both doing well. The roast is a reference to Mitch's concerning amount of stairs in his home, perhaps as many as 60. It would be nice to hear this on the podcast one day, roastspoonman at gmail.com. Mitch, we have Gober's, a- He's doing like, he's playing some music. Like he puts, his, he posts his music up online. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, he's got like a band, but it's just him. Mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. but you know, yeah, he's he's doing great. Uh, we have a couple of announcements, Mitch. Yes. We, we have a fantastic guest here, and 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 we're 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 running late because we for for a variety of reasons. So we yeah. don't want to take up too much of his time. But so I'll get I'll speed through these. First of all, you don't have to speed through anything. No, I'm gonna. Get all right, let's get back to Gober for a few minutes. All right. <laughs> Actually, Nick, do what you're gonna do. <laughs> Remember when Gober used to like take his shirt off and push his stomach out and be like, "Here's the pregnant lady," and that was like his big character. <laughs> Like, Which is what? crazy that what? we're saying that he's not funny because that is funny. It was well, it's funny in theory, but you watch him pull it off, it was confusing. Yeah, he's like, he, this like guy's like a duck. He has like zero, you know, like yeah. people that you meet in the comedy world and like they can't even talk to like a normal human, like they can't have a conversation with you. Yes, yeah. So why? But like the ideas were there for Gober. He had, yeah, he had good ideas. He could have been a writer, but he just insisted on What were you going to do, himself. Nick? I'm sorry, you were starting to do something else. <laughs> so, <laughs> first announcement. Uh, our producer, uh, our MVP, the great wow. uh, Emma Erdbrink, it is her birthday eve as, as of this recording. Wow. Uh, when this episode releases, she will be on the other side of 30. Emma, I don't know if you want to be to say your age, so we can bleep that. You can bleep oh, no, that. <laughs> wow. Happy birthday, Emma. That's Thank Happy you birthday, so much, Emma. guys. Thank you. 20, I'm excited. 20, it's going to be fun. A 21 wow salute for you. That's what 21 wow <laughs> salute. Can we, there are three of us, so we have to say it seven times. Okay, great. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Wow. 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 Wow, 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 wow. Oh, Mitch. I was counting seven. Oh, seven. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was 30. No. No, 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 no. No, it was, no, it's 21. <laughs> oh. Do you remember Gober? You remember Go- Gober's 30? Emma, quick question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gober's 30. He was like, I get 30 kisses by the end of the night. And we're like, Gober, this well, is going to be, this is going to be uncomfortable. It's also because he had, he was like, Great Gatsby had just come out, the Baz yeah. Luhrmann one. And he was like, it's going to be like a Gatsby ball. And we're like, how are you affording this? <laughs> He like rented out a he like rented out a venue, he like rented mm-hmm. out a ballroom, and they mm-hmm. had like ice sculptures and shit. And we're mm-hmm. like, Gober, like you're unemployed. What? Where did this come from? And then I remember he did do he did characters from around the world that night. And, like he, <laughs> he, was like, he was like, I'm gonna do my show because it's my birthday. <laughs> and like a makeshift stage, he's up there, and everyone, no one likes it. No one likes it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, hey, Nick, Gober. <laughs> Nick, what are the books you have there behind you? Oh, yeah, we got... Uh... You know, just hand me any of them. Just they don't read. Some, Very good. Give me some to Here's the woman the warrior. You can enjoy that one. All right. Uh, th- so, happy birthday, Emma. Thank oh, you so right. much okay. for okay. Happy birthday, Bye. Emma. And uh, the, the, the second announcement, Mitch. Mm. Next week... <gasps> Our annual tournament of champions begins. Wow. It comes faster every year, but we are already there. Wow. And we can announce wow. the theme for this year is Munch Madness 2023, the tournament of champions, Bowl. 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 That's right. We are going to be reviewing the office lunch staple. Bowl places. That's right. Places you can get a big, sad pile of food, mm. just pure nutrition. 
bowl. And that you know is what? The theme. We're sending off today with a place that you can do that if you wanted it's to. It's pretty similar. It may have been in the, the competition. You know what? If it was in the competition, it might have run away with it, not to spoil anything. It might have kind done, of a spoiler. It, it might have. It might have done. Our, we can believe part of that. <laughs> it might. It, it would have done. I think it would have done well for itself. Yeah. Um. Not in the hey, competition. Just because you have a great bowl doesn't make you a great restaurant, does That's it? That's true. And I think also part of the competition is you should be bowl focused, primarily because this place has bowls, but I wouldn't call it a bowl place. It's we not, we know what a bowl place. It's is. It's not a bowl. Was there an earthquake? So, is that now? A, yeah. Well, I, know. That. I didn't feel it. I might have just shifted in my seat. That's that, but I felt like it felt like a wobble. <laughs> you guys feel that? Mitch, did you feel that? It felt Hodgman uh, was wobbling Mitch's chair. Oh, well, there it is again. Yeah, that's what it, it felt yeah. like. It felt like a Yeah. It's all it's all is coming. earthquake trending? It's all coming to an end. This is really should how I should die. <laughs> in the head, in gum, the studio. head gum studios. Cr- <laughs> crushed by the falling stealing of the studio. <laughs> to get crushed by the doughboy sign would be a funny death. Some of these, you mm, know, poetic. Get, getting a concussion from some of these falling succulents on these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting bonked these, on the uh, head by a fake cash. Shelves behind. <laughs> the, last time, the, la- the last time I saw you in person. Yeah. Well, we were on stage in Boston, Massachusetts, 2019. Mm. Was it that long ago? Person. Yeah. So, you, know, you, you, you nice people in person. Yeah, lovely. Since then. And, uh. And I I uh, I think of that show fondly. I've not been back to the Wilbersons, Last. and I presume you haven't. We ha- wait. Did we go back? No, we gone I've back. driven by it since. Then. No, I you think haven't. We went back. You I think certainly we went wouldn't back. have gone and done a show at the Wilbur without me, would you? I think we did. Mitch. Oh wait, did we? Oh, yeah, really? We did. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no, I know that's In true. In fact, really- I think I had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was I a great. I had COVID for the first time. <laughs> Um, it's but funny. then before that, well, also that was an amazing show. You had Gabriel oh, and Carl on it, and they're amazing. And of course, better than me, sure. No, no never. for sure. No one no. is. No, I'm saying they are. What were you going to say? The point is, the, the, before COVID, that, you're say I met you in person snotty. back when back when you ran this little operation where uh, that that previous hovel where Mitch lived. That we, stairless we have, hovel. There were no stairs there. Were there. Stairs there were no leading stairs up to there. the to the non stared Yeah, but outside stairs. Outside right. stairs. Yeah. The, the pre place. the pre moving on up, Mitch. Yeah. Landlord Mike still hasn't Mitchell given me my uh, hasn't given me my uh, depo- security deposit. And now yeah, and now back. look at us. Here we are. Look at us. We're sitting on some, I don't know, blue dot furniture. Maybe some IKEA. I don't know where I, it feels IKEA ish, right? Like Pretty comfy. First, what were you going to say first about having furniture COVID. in a in a room yeah. with some shelves and some succulents that could fall on me? Nice tableau. And um, it's terrific because now you're on. I'm on camera now. <laughs> we love it. We Which, love being. Uh, we hate the camera. We love being on it. Headgum Headgum's signature fat cam. The, my, yeah. my gut. I was also thinking that like if there was an earthquake and I got knocked out, like to be woken up by a Headgum hunk. <laughs> Marty hey, is buddy. Marty's. <laughs> you're right, dude. <laughs> you cool, I bro? Just, I don't know who could possibly be watching this, but yeah, this is what I look like. It's a, it was a hard. <laughs> it was a hard couple of years. Thanks for giving me a chair to sit in. This is the best. <laughs> Best way for a middle aged man to be. Yes, I think yeah. there could be no camera. The only more flattering thing could be sitting in like high stools, I think is the only other thing. <laughs> could be. What were you going to say about me having COVID? Yeah. You were... Oh, I was just going to say the. Uh, do you remember like it was like March 2020 and Gober put up <laughs> his one man show like in like a black box theater? And we're like, what are you doing? It's like, we can't, you can't do that now. It's like the height of this pandemic. No one knew it was going to, we all thought we we're going to die. Yeah. And he's like in there doing like characters from around the world. <laughs> around the world. He was doing it and he was like, like no one showed up at all. Like yeah. there was no one there. And then, so he like blamed his failure on the COVID. He pandemic. blamed it. And, but then he also was like sent out an email. was like, like I, w- this was like a charity event. I was trying to raise money for people mm-hmm. who've been displaced by the band and no one showed up. And that makes me feel really unsupported. Yeah. Like Gobert, come on. Gobert. Dude. And then also the charity, remember the charity was the sick fund. And we're like, this seems fake. It's yeah. What is the sick fund? <laughs> the sick fund just, it didn't, it felt like Gobert was full of shit. Anyways, hi-de-ho to Spoon Nation. Emma, let's hit him with a drop. Is this one sent in from Gober? Scalpel, doctor, I don't think we should be doing this. I said give me the scalpel. A governmental experiment. Oh, God. The operation was a success. Wonderful. 
to turn one man They gave me a dead man's hole Into the ultimate killing machine Dr. Mitchell, how does it look? Perfect fit But he was never supposed to know But then I found out he was an executed serial killer Oh my god yeah. This summer Experience a tale of revenge A tale of love and a tale of buttholes. Dead man's hole. Playing nowhere. This wow. Time. So this is uh, this this is this was a, a, one of the drop off submissions. The, the last I, I feel like this was the second place finisher, the silver yeah. medalist in the drop off. Mm-hmm. We love Dead Man's Hole. Um. So this is, hey, Doughboys, formerly Kenny of Somerville here. Oh. I'm now Kenny of L.A. Oh. Sorry, I left Boston, Mitch. For the drop-off, I made an 80s thriller movie trailer for Dead Man's Hole, one of my personal favorite bits of 2022. Thanks for another wonderful year of laughs and another another wonderful year of my girlfriend asking me to put on headphones. (laughs) (laughs) Motherfucker. I mean, you're right. You should put on headphones. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Or just don't listen. Just don't listen. You Gober's got a podcast. <laughs> a brief reading from the Woman Warrior. He's uh, watching Maxine the Hunt. whole he was watching all of the Drew Carey show for the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, I like that sitcom, but who is this for? Yeah, it, it seems uh, it, it, it's a very niche podcast. Yeah. It's, uh it's called Go Go Gober. Isn't it's it? called Go Go Gober. And uh with he, with Gober. With Gober. And then he and then we're like, okay, so the title should at least pertain to what you're doing. <laughs> He's like, well, it opens it up. I could be it could evolve into other things when I'm doing mm-hmm. the Drew Carey show. Mm-hmm. But like if you I I listen to a couple episodes, it's just him saying like what he would have done if he was in the Drew Carey yeah. show. But it's like as if he was a real guy in the Drew Carey universe. It's mm-hmm. not like if I was an, if I was Ryan Stiles part, I would have said this instead. Yeah. It's like, oh like what if I also worked with Drew Carey and like lived in his neighborhood? <laughs> it's just so confusing. It's really he talks about what he would have done if he uh, it's uh, she talks about working at the oh God, I wish I knew more about the Drew Carey show. <laughs> You're not you're not steeped in the Drew universe. <laughs> did you work in a brewery at one point? Uh, he did. I think he eventually did I that. Knew it. He, it was set in Cleveland, but at first he worked in kind of a standard office job. Yeah, I mean that's his thing too. He like he would have gotten rid of Ryan Styles. He said, "Yeah, he would have said like I would have fired him from uh, the Winfred Lauder department store." <laughs> uh, Drew Carey show is a show that I did. I like remember like laying on the foot of my parents' bed watching that show. Yeah. Just in like years where you would just, you know, when you would just waste time. I watched so much of the Drew Carey show and I, you know what? I think a funny show, a funny show, a funny sure. sitcom. It's kind of like disappeared. Mm-hmm. You can't really find it anymore. Frag mm-hmm. probably because of rights issues, but like you watch it as like, oh, this has a lot of good jokes. And you know what? Drew Carey took over the, when t- talking of my page experience, took mm-hmm. over Price is Right. I played the price. I, te- for Drew's test to be the Price is Right host, I, I played the games. I came on down, Wags. Oh yeah, yeah. It was me and other pages. Do I have I told this before? I don't. I I haven't heard it. It was me and like anything. As long as it's not about Gober, I'm game. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gober was one of the pages. There. <laughs> Gober. And I think that that's maybe where he came up with the idea for the the Drew Carey Show podcast rewatch. I remember you telling me that he would always mess up the lunch order. He would like, always he just mess like, up and the it was order. like it reached a point where he thought it was maybe intentional, so he didn't have to do it. Yeah, yes. So like other people, I got it, Gober. Don't worry about it. It was like bad mess up. You'll be like, I'll get a salad, and he'd bring you like a sub. Yes. So yeah. it was like really bad mess up. They call that weaponized incompetence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they say that's, that online. That's Gober. Yeah, that's Gober. But Gober we, in a nutshell. So, me, Gober, and a couple other pages, we we were testing out. <laughs> we tested out. The big uh, wheel? For real. This uh-huh. is, I mean, I have said this on the podcast. Yeah. But they, they called us all down, and then I played Plinko. So that was fun. I got to play Plinko while, like, Drew was saying stuff. And then I did spin the big wheel, and I've told Wags this, and I said it on the podcast. But it was like I nearly spun a dollar, and then it just suddenly stopped, like, at 15 cents or whatever before it. And there was a crew guy behind it who stopped it. He was like trying to like hurry things along. So he's You're st- saying the wheel is rigged. I'm not saying the wheel is rigged, but I'm saying that he- it was rigged that day. The capa- that, they have the capacity to rig. That day. They have the capacity it, it, to rig. There was a crew it. guy yeah. who was like, let's keep things moving here. 
And like, it was so clear that he had stopped the wheel. Yeah. Wow. You know, I was a, I was a, a celebrity guest on, um, who wants to be a millionaire? Is that true? That is, that is cool. And I look forward to telling the story once I am introduced. Our guest today from Dicktown and Judge John Hodgman and the upcoming romantic comedy musical called Up Here. Episodes drop March 24th on Hulu. On Hulu. Our good friend John Hodgman. Hello. Hi, John. Thanks for being here. I'm so happy to be here. What a treat. What a, a treat to have you. And we had a wonderful lunch together. And, and, uh, and sure here did. we are now sitting in this room. But I was, uh, they asked me to be a celebrity uh, phone a friend or something. Wow. What were all the lifelines? 50, yeah, that was 50. one of them. You had 50 50, oh, phone yeah. a friend, and you had pulled the audience. Right. And so they had celebrity phone a friends. This is when wow. Meredith Vieira was hosting it. That's cool. And um, it was an early experience in work from home. Because they shot it in L.A. and they did not want to fly me there, and argue I was only arguably a celebrity to begin with. This was obviously more than ten years ago when I was still on the Daily Show and stuff. You're a celebrity, very much so. Well, that's very kind of you yeah. to say. But in any case, they sent me a kit with a camera and uh, a microphone and everything else, and I had to do it from from home. Mm -hmm. And so I was watching the taping remotely, and when the the, the um, contestant wanted to phone a friend, they were phoning me. That's wild. That's really cool. And there was no, I was sitting at a computer and there was no guidance given as to whether or not <gasps> I could use the computer. Oh wow. my God. And what I real, and, and so I didn't, because I'm a very, I'm a good boy. I'm an yeah. only child. I'm a rule follower. And I figured it would be cheating. I so would have cheated. I wish I had, I wish that I had. Because I lost people some money that day. No. I, mean, I helped people with get some money. There were some answers that I definitely knew, but there were but there were some stumpers for old Hodgman. And I had a I had a producer in my ear and my headphone. And every time I gave the wrong answer, the person lost to go, Oh, that's a real shame. <laughs> the what the was hell? Like, we really wanted her to go farther. Oh like, man. Oh, she seemed so nice. What a shame. And I was in the moment, I, I I thought maybe I was getting hints, yeah, that I should be get I should be you know checking Google right as I did it, but I saw a quiz show. I didn't want that to happen to me. No, yeah, I didn't want to become part of a national scandal. Yeah, having to testify in front of Congress. I didn't. Yeah, that's one of the things that I don't want to do. Yeah. The wait. So so the I, I, I how many was it was it all contained within one episode? Multiple episodes. It was one episode. It was one episode. I mean, yeah. Like, game shows usually will film several episodes a day, but right. I was only on for one episode. Maybe they intended for me to be on several episodes, and they pulled the plug. How many people did you did you help out? I would say maybe four or five. Wow. Yeah. Wow. On wow. that episode, I yeah. guess? Maybe, th maybe three or four. Wow. And, you, oh, and cool. you helped some people win. Do you remember any of the questions or no? The one I remember was um, uh, how, many, um, how many zeros are in a billion how many uh, zeros are in a billion? The nine? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like nine. Hold on. I had to write. I had to write it out. I'm honestly, I don't remember the answer right now. Hundred is three. I think it's nine. Six. Nine. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh. Uh, one to six. Hundred is two zeros. Hundred is two zeros. Oh, <laughs> hundred is two, but thousand is three. A thousand, thousand is three. Is three. Well, a million is six, and a billion is a billion is nine. one thousand million. One thousand million. So I think it's. I think that's nine. That's probably right. I'm not going to, I did it then, I've done it once, I'm not yeah. going to do it again. Yeah. Everyone else Get can figure it out. Yeah. You're on your own. If you, you want know, to be a millionaire, why don't you work for it like Mitch? There you go. You know who my phone friend would be? No one, no one gave him, no one gave him a million dollars. Yeah. No one gave him 54 stairs. He earned each and every one. Each stair cost about, hmm, if I had to put a price to the stair, I think it was like 50K per stair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> These days with inflation. Um, you know who my phone a friend would be? Gober. <laughs> God damn it! I took a COVID test to get in. I mean, here. You're, you, you know, and you know, you know what's gonna happen. I don't use them. I don't use Gober for the phone a friend, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's like. In mm. season two of Drew Carey, what? And I'm yes, like, yeah. Oh, fuck. fuck. Why didn't why, why did I, I pull the audience on this? In oh, my God. In James Gunn's expanded Druniverse. <laughs> 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 and then you get you get to a, it's a question and it's like, uh, uh, you know, 
who was the first prime minister of India? And you call Gober and he's like, he, he starts to do like a character to like try to answer it. And he's like, Jesus, man, they're not going to put this on TV. <laughs> they're, fucking, they're just like, shut it down. Yeah. You don't get the <laughs> yeah, answer. No. It was Nehru, wasn't it? Sounds right. Yeah, I think it Holy was. Oh, shit. Maybe you'd be my phone a friend, John. Yeah, you'd be a great fr- phone a, a I let friend. a lot Those of people dudes... down that day. A lot of people did not become millionaires. You got a brain full of facts. I'm not going to help you. You're already uh, uh, rich Uncle Penny bags from Monopoly over here with your <laughs> stairs. <laughs> It's because I got a few stairs. Everyone treats me differently now. You know, I'm, there was a young adult novel, a young adult science fiction novel by a guy named William Slater that, I, that really made an impression on me. Mm. It was about some kids who got kidnapped and woke up. This is a very contemporary sounding thing, but this is, you know, when I was young in the Middle Ages or whatever, in the 70s or 80s, it was written. Mm-hmm. And they're, four teenagers are kidnapped and they wake up in a, in a building that is just completely full of stairs. They wow. cannot see like anything that. beyond stairs. And there's one landing where there's this combination sink, water fountain, or as you would say, New England bubbler, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and toilet. And then on another landing, there was a machine that would be, um, that would be dispensing these little meat cakes. But that was the only food they could eat. And uh, you, in, in that case, I can swear on this, right? Yeah, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah. In that case, shit was fucked up. They they couldn't yeah. figure out what what the fuck was going on, and I don't remember what happened. All I all I remember about that is two things. One, I still think about those meat cakes. I've been tracing those meat cakes for my whole life. <laughs> yeah, even though they're <laughs> pumped out by a machine in some kind of dystopian torture factory, they seemed really good to me, like little sausage patties. And two was, uh, the name of this book was House of Stairs. And the other thing I've always thought about since I read that is someday I'm going to meet a guy who's got as many stairs as House of Stairs. <laughs> Well, you had William Slater, and we had Christian Slater. Yeah, yeah, bro. dude. Uh, the, here's my question. I five now in front of my face. Here's your now it's Slater <laughs> Kenny. Oh boy, get me started. That is someone, right? Yeah, Slater Kenny is the yeah is, rock band. Is it? Or what, you're talking about the like a like a like all stairs. Are we talking like a ziggurat, like a step slope pyramid, or, or are we talking like the the image on the on oh, the Jesus. cover made it out? Can to you be give a me very, that book? By and, the way. <laughs> And, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy one. I don't know if it's in print anymore, but it was um it was like an M C Escher. Oh, okay. So they're thing. going in all different directions. They're going in all different directions. Wow. It's very disorienting to the to the teen the teens. That's there's, cool. There's quite a few horror movies kind of based on on, on that kind of vibe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, you wake up in a place and Cube was one of them, right? Wasn't Cube oh yeah, one of those? Cube is one of them. Cube is Cube is great. Yeah, I, like I don't Cube. know why they never made House of Stairs into a movie. And then there was Sounds one like that movie. was like Netflix had a similar movie to Cube that was like, like there was like different levels to the I don't know some yeah. s- similar bullshit. Squid Games. Squid Games. I think it was just Squid it was Games. Squid Games. <laughs> I was reading a Christian Slater book. Um, that was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you read the novelization of Gleaming the Cube? Yeah. <laughs> Starring Christian Slater. <laughs> I was trying to think of a Christian Slater. He was in Heathers, right? Heathers. He was in Heathers. That was yeah. his big breakout. He was in, uh, what's uh, he's got that that comedy that that very, it, it was a failed action comedy called Cuffs, yes. I think. Where it was with like. With a K. K-U-F-S, yeah, with a K. And he like right. talked to the camera. It was kind of like a weird fourth wall. Oh, wait, thing. did he do the. Pump up the volume. Pump up the he volume, yeah. Pump up Is the he volume. in Tarantino written movie? What's it called? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. True Romance. True, True, oh, of course. Yes, True Romance. True Casey, our engineer in studio. Thank you, Casey. Chime in. Uh, yeah, True Romance. People love True Romance. I haven't watched True Romance Gleaming in like the Cube, I think, was a skateboarding years. movie. That sounds right. It was a skateboarding movie. Yeah, that was, that was like where I learned about the, like, that empty, like, teenagers were going to empty pools and skateboard. Yeah, yeah, that's how skating pool. culture started out yeah. here in Southern California. I, I think you probably have known about that. I so well, I, I, I like I learned it from here. Gleaming the Cube, but yeah, then I then Not I from heard about it. Being outdoors and seeing no. it at all, was, but he wasn't in uh, uh, prayer, kind of a prayer for the Roller Boys, right? I don't know if he was in a prayer for the Roller Boys. <laughs> Did you walk by where you're like, "Hey, fill that up, fill up that pool, buddy"? <laughs> hey, you kids, in. get out of there. <laughs> Christian Slater is still working a lot. In Fleischman is in trouble. New ah. series, also on Hulu. Uh, Willow, got it on the, He's the in Willow, Willow show. It's on the Willow show. Yeah, he was in the original Willow too, wasn't he? Or no? no? That's uh, that sounds right. His thing is that he's kind of like Jack. He's Nicholson. kind of a Jack Nicholson. Yeah, <laughs> that was uncanny. Hey, it's me, Jack. Reviewing uh, spits. Is that Jack or 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 Christian Slater? Do you remember Gober had a Christian Slater impression? Yeah. 
And we, but the thing, it sounded oh, so you. much like like Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. Oh, that thank we're all you. like, like what? Because he'd like be quoting Christian Slater movies, but he'd be kind of in a Jack Nicholson and voice. It would be a weird thing. He'd be like, "Here I am, courtside at the Lakers," and we're like, <laughs> "Like, wait, that's Jack. that's what Jack Nicholson would say." And then he was like, "Like he would argue with you, but like, like, Christian right. Slater's like he's ri- he's like famous. Yeah, he, he goes to money. basketball think, games and stuff. You think Christian Slater can't get courtside seats? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah, he could. I mean, I'd be like, well, yes, I understand that intellectually. I'm just saying from an audience's perspective, it's confusing. Yeah, and he would just like he'd just get even more." Uh, he'd just dig in. And then, yeah, he'd be like, yeah, here I am at courtside at the Lakers. Ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? And you're like, that's... He's, that's a line from Batman. That's from a Batman, line from Batman. The Jack Nicholson Joker. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what people are going to think of. And he's like, well, he could have been the Joker. He's, yeah, and he then, then he's also like... the Joker. Yeah. And he, but he's also saying, like, he's quoting the Joker. And you're like, why is Christian Slater <laughs> Why would he quoting? be quoting a Jack Nicholson movie? <laughs> I'm probably proudest of his Preetsy's honor. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was a movie. That was a Jack Nicholson movie. <laughs> and Gober would be like, oh, you didn't know that uh, Christian Slater mounted a, an off-Broadway production of a play at Prince's yeah. Honor. He was very proud of that work. He, he had an answer for everything. He just though. wanted to fight he notes just, is he, a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where we're trying, you're trying to help somebody and they just are fighting back. It's like, well, what are we doing here? You know what's good? Wait, is wait, that... wait. What's his name again? Uh, Mac Gober. Mac Gober. Yeah, that sounds like him. <laughs> Remember how his name was Mac Gober? <laughs> oh, yeah. Crazy. By the way, uh, the last time we went on a bit about a guy in the comedy world, it wasn't a completely divisive episode where some people vowed to not listen to the podcast ever again. Wait, really? I mean, I think, I mean, I think people also loved it. Yeah. But that's, that's, that was someone okay. completely different. Yeah, that was, that, we were talking about someone else. Yeah. So I'm we not actually about... going to die in a in a in an earthquake here in this studio. I'm just simply going to be canceled because of association <laughs> with a conversation about somebody that I don't know, and I was half convinced you were making up. You know, it's as always... part of some elaborate improv game. <laughs> You're guessing on the Doughboys. It's always more and humiliate me. <laughs> it's a spin of the roulette wheel. Whether it's the episode where we're going to get canceled, it's kind of right. just like a toss up if it's going to happen. I knew what happen. I was getting into. So let me just say one more time. Uh, up here on Hulu, <laughs> premieres March twenty fourth. It was it was created by Bobby Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez. Mm. Bobby Lopez, of course, is the co creator of Avenue Q and Book of Mormon. Mm. Very and cool. together with his partner, both in life and in song, he writes songs. They write songs together, That's including the song "Let It Go," which was in a Disney film. Wow! And, and you... now, and now they've made a romantic comedy musical starring Mae Whitman and Carlos Valdez. And it was really, and I get to play the dad in it. And you got, you get to sing a little bit. I sing along. They know, they, I've known them for a long time, so they know my limitations. I have one solo song line and I sing, note the spatter of blood at the base of the stairs. That's great. Wow. That's you want to cool. find out the context for that, tune in up here on Hulu. All right. Now I'm. Either dead or canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say this. I think didn't you do Let It Do? Didn't you do that at one point? I feel like you did. Fuck, that's good. <laughs> did you not do that? I must have done. I it. feel like you did yeah, Let It Do. Let yeah. It Do. I feel yeah. like you've done that yeah. before. I could be wrong. I'm hungry for some dough. I, that's good. It's good. Let it do. Let it do. <laughs> Again, I'd like some dough. Wow. Holy, this is happening right now. Yeah, just, you know, <laughs> off the dome. <laughs> right, off the dome. Off the dome, off yes. Off the dome. John, how do you feel about Mediterranean food? <laughs> what rhymes with cold? Uh, Well, I mean, cold is a... What food rhymes with cold? Oh, uh, mold. Rolled, rolled gold. Rolled gold. What about mold? Rolled gold mold. never bothered me anyway. There you go. Let it, let it do, let it do. Don't let it turn to mold. Right, that could work. Yeah, but I was looking for the line. Have you ever heard the song? Mold never bothered me <laughs> anyway. Cold never bothered uh, me anyway. Mold actually probably mold, works there. Mold, mold never, never bothered me, mold me never anyway. Mold never bothered me anyway. Yeah, yeah. that's if right. If you're talking about dough, maybe the dough got moldy. Maybe sure. the dough got moldy for yeah. sure. All right, great. We cracked it. It right. happens. I'm a dough maker, as you know, and I make a good New York style bagel. Yeah, you do. You do. Huh? You sure do. The last time I was in New York City, I believe. Wait, did I see you? No, this was now. No. This is we were going to get together events. in New Haven and eat pizza. But yeah, you guys are going to do a pizza together. tour. Yeah, never, never got together. I mean, well, you it didn't it, happen. Uh, you couldn't. Uh, you, uh, you couldn't do it, right? Wasn't that what happened? I chose not to. And I, you know what? I'm sad because it was. It was. A, it, was a, it was a conversation we had, and then I thought, mm, no, 
I never we could have saw you could have seen oh, Dano I... and the guys. Mike is how's Dano doing? By the way, Dano's great. He's got a son, baby boy. No, yes. he does. He sure does. How, how I didn't know this. I'm sorry. I I, I missed an episode or something. Uh, a little. Uh, I don't know if I should say his name, but a yeah. little cute. Uh, I don't think he'll care either. No, You'd that's okay. Uh, be, uh, Benny Boy. That's his given name? Well, Ben. Okay. Benjamin. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> also, I hope it's his name. I feel like I'm, I'm not great with baby Please names. Please bleep but... my coughing. I'm not sick. I took a COVID <laughs> test. I'm just disgusting. Yeah, we're all fine. Um, yeah. He's... I would have been so excited if Dano had literally named his son Benny Boy. I mean, that's... I mean, that's I, he's definitely... I'm going to definitely call him Benny Boy, but yeah. he, he and his wife... Doing great. That's wonderful. Give them my give them my hellos. He's watching. We we talk about movies a lot. Ask him if he wants his hat back. I'd be happy to send it. I feel like you, as an heirloom for for and, his child. And I feel like he got the better deal of the hat trade. He had a great hat. Well, insofar as my hat was a Quebec Nordiques hat that probably I'd worn three times, and yeah, his and his was, hat a, was a Detroit Tigers hat that um, that had that Dano stank. I think, he was, I think he was born in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of hats, it's great. I'm very proud to have the hat. That was a great time in Boston. Yes. That was a great, we had a great time. And I'm telling you something, that show you did with Gabrus and Carl was one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. God bless you. A lot it was of fun. So great. So great. Couldn't be there. Uh can I can I ask can I ask while we're on the topic of hats? Because you have a you have a lovely hat you're wearing in yeah, studio today. I was can you about describe to it for say us? before I came in. Yeah. Don't ask me about this hat because I don't remember. But okay. I'm, it's an ant it's a another extinct hockey team. It looks cool. Should, we, should you and I exchange hats? It's another extinct <laughs> hockey team. It's got like a, called, a P on it and yeah, several it's hockey It's Plattsburgh, New York. Okay. And I don't. I think it's the Plattsburgh Pioneers. I meant to look it up before I got in here. But you know, since I wrote about the Hartford Whalers in my book, Vacation Land, now available in paperback, I uh, 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 things have really taken off for the sport of extinct hockey. People are really into it now. Wow. You're going to be pissed at me. And there are a lot of, com- there are a lot of companies that are... Finding old teams and putting, this is like a minor league hockey, yeah. not an NHL or whatever. You're going to be mad at me, but Plattsburgh, New York, hometown of Gober. That's his hometown. That's not true. It is true. How dare you? It is true. Oh, yeah. Go- Gober Pharmacy. Gober Pharmacy is his headquarters. Is his headquarters. <laughs> he grew up, the family kind of owns the town. Yeah. And there was like a mysterious murder that like revolved around his family, but yeah. Yeah. They were like, forget getting, about it. It's Gober Town. I, I'm getting to that point uh-huh. in my decrepitude where it's actually appropriate like this is good practice for me <laughs> for when when i become a granddad and i just have to sit in a living room <laughs> while people are having conversations that i do not understand <laughs> and i'm not welcome in <laughs> and be ever and every now and then i say uh uh, uh grandpa john you want to play you want to play can i get you something i'm like no it's fine I'm just <laughs> going over the old times in my head Kids are talking about Christian Slater I rem- again. I, I, rem- I remember I remember when Mitch used to do this in a stairless house. <laughs> <laughs> Before it got fancy. <laughs> I don't understand. Kids today don't want to work. They just want to sit on blue dot furniture. I got to get my de- security deposit back. I'm, I'm going after it. Yeah. You're going to get your security deposit back from that old place? No. I, left it. I, I lived there for almost 12 years. You know what they say? The 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 people who really pinch pennies are the rich people. You know what I mean? Yeah. True. They're the ones, the real misers, mm-hmm. right, going after a security deposit. Oh wait a minute! I thought you were talking about the fucking <laughs> landlord. <laughs> let it do, let it do, Mitch. <laughs> Let's oh. take a break. Uh, we got a lot of restaurant to discuss. So I had we'll more, right you'll back. like this. I, there was this part of the floor that was worn down. Yeah, that he never told me. Yes. about. he was like, it's worn down. But I'm also like, I lived there for twelve years. Like that's on you. You have to like that's not on me. We'll 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 talk about this. No, we're not. We're, we're, not, gonna, we're not gonna get back into All this. All right, fine. That you you've you've wrapped up your point. Uh we will hopefully get your security deposit back mm-hmm. and we will be back with more doughboys right after this. Wow. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, when I don't feel like my best self, I, I'm 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 distracted. I can only, you know, think about my failings instead of what I need to do to keep myself going. And when you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you. Because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. Personally, I benefited from therapy. 
It's been transformative for my mental health and my physical health, honestly. And whether or not you've been in therapy personally, you know, it may help you. Therapy has all sorts of broad benefits that can help every aspect of your life. Learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, being the best version of yourself. It's not just for people who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Doughboys today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Doughboys. Wags. Our next partner has truly made a positive impact on the most important person in my life. And no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking Wally and Erms, my cats. I'm talking about Smalls cat food. Do you think of your cats as people? Most important person in your life are your cats? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Why, well, it's a new year, and I've decided to update the cat food that wow. I feed my cat. And that's why you've got to try Smalls. It's 2023. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Kibble? What are you doing, kibble? What are you doing? You're feeding your cat kibble? Now is the time to update your cat food with Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge. And it's delivered right to your door, Wags. Wow. I'm not a man who likes to go outside. I like to stay in and play video games. It gets delivered right to my door, and it's cold. It's packaged nice. You put it in your fridge, and you feed your cats. It's as simple as that. Smalls was started back in 2017 by a couple of guys home cooking cat food in small batches for their friends. A few short years later, they've served millions of meals to cats around the world. Hold Wags. on. Smalls is newer than Doughboys? Smalls is newer than Doughboys. Wow. And better than Doughboys in every way. <laughs> Certainly more popular. At this point, you might be wondering, why can't I just feed my cat kibble? When it comes to big pet food, let's just say you don't want to see how the sausage is made. Think pink sludge getting extruded at extremely high temperatures. Or just think of yeah. Doughboys videos. Yeah. If that sounds gross, imagine having to eat it every day. Smalls takes a different approach. It is cooked gently, just like food would be in your own kitchen, and they work with leading cat nutritionists to create recipes that are exactly what your little furball craves and needs. Wow. After making the switch to Smalls, 78% of cat owners reported their cats had a shinier and softer fur, and 90% reported overall health improvements. That's a big deal, That's wives. a big deal. And the, the team at Smalls is so confident your cat will love their product that you can try it risk free. Mm -hmm. That means they will refund you if your cat won't eat their food. That's right. And Wags, I've fed Wally and Irma Smalls. Wow. And their coats are really shiny. Yeah. They're nice and soft, which yeah. is good because I love nothing more than laying in bed with them and petting them on the chin. That's right. I love my cats, Wags. And I keep feed my cats Smalls. It's good for my cats and wow. they like it. And hey, I can finally open up a package of cat food and not get nauseous. I actually recognize the ingredients in a package of Smalls foods. And I, hey, you know, they're happier. They're shinier. Mm -hmm. They really love that smooth fish Ooh. flavor. But I love them. Treat your cats right, too. Remember, higher quality ingredients means a healthier and happier life for your kitty. So head to smalls.com slash doughboys and use promo code doughboys at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping, Wags. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code doughboys for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code DOUGHBOYS for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Try Smalls. Make your cat happy. Wow. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with the great John Hodgman discussing this week's restaurant, Spitz, with a Z, S-P-I-T-Z, a reference to the Spitz, the turning rods that meet. Oh, it's not a reference to saliva? No, it's not a reference oh. to that, yes. Although you do, the, you do hear you can the understand name. why I might be confused. It's a little repulsive. The, the name, name of the restaurant is Spitz. Yeah, it's yeah. you hear gross. it and you think, "No, not in my food." Is your initial reaction? Yeah, but right, it's you know, it's not the same type of Spitz. It's not the same sort of Spitz. Not it's the a different same sort of, sort of Spitz. It's a turning Spit. It reminds me of how we named our cartoon Dicktown. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good name. It's a, I, I mean, it's an eye catcher. Yeah, very strangely, when you put it into Google, it actually leads to our cartoon. Hey, that's great. Uh, I, good on I you. I was very surprised. Yeah, there's good SEO. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, a, it's a little, it's, yeah, they should call it, yes, it's a restaurant actually named Spitz. Yes. 
Uh, it, it was founded by Occidental College graduates from Minnesota and Utah who fell in love with Mediterranean food while traveling. They opened their first location in L.A.'s Eagle Rock neighborhood. So oh, it's yeah. local in 2006. And it has grown. Oh, it's been around that long. Ever since. Yeah, it's been around since then. And then it, it's kind of in recent years become a national chain that I think is in nine states. Pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like nine states and several and a few dozen locations. And it's it's sort of like for people who haven't been there, it is a fast, casual Mediterranean food concept, but also at least the location we went to. And I think this is a lot of the locations are kind of have a gastro pubby feel. Sure. I, yeah, this place was decked out in a lot of 80s and 90s uh, record album covers yes. and stuff like that. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you felt like you were walking into like a, a, a cool roadside stand in 1999. And they have like they, they have a seasonal mulled wine they were offering. They mm. have craft beers. It, it is. Well, very... you know, the mold never bothered me anyway. <laughs> 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 I think it would work. That's good. We got there. Yeah, we got there. <sighs> The, so you, uh, but it's like you order at the counter and then you can kind of, you know, you can sit there, they have a bar and you can sit anywhere in the restaurant. And if you're feeling, if you're feeling frisky, you go over to the game zone. It's true. They have a game zone with board games. Pick up a, pick up a, a, a box of Scrabble. Yeah. Do a little Jenga. Grab Pictionary, try yeah. not to get tzatziki sauce on it. Yeah, it's like, go? it's like people are like, I want to have fun like the people on commercials have fun. That's what it feels like in there. <laughs> when I was looking for parking, you were, you made a joke that you were going to, which parking was a whole or ordeal, but mm -hmm. you said you were going to. Get some mulled wine. You're gonna yeah. go around for it, and then you didn't get it. I thought it would have actually been kind of fun, but it would have been an early alcoholic beverage. Well, it was, at first it was a hot mulled wine, yeah, and it's right. like a it's like an unseasonably warm it's day warm here day. in Los Angeles and tomorrow. Yeah. So I thought yeah. having hot mulled wine, a boozy hot uh, mm. alcoholic beverage for lunch when we we're all gonna go record afterwards might make us a little sleepy. So Seems it wasn't bad. that serious. Yeah. By the way. Couple of cool names. Eagle Rock. It was a it was a joke, is what he said. Yeah, it was, it was making, just a joke. Just making a little joke. I know. I now get that that it was a joke. I mean, I think you replied LOL, which was I maybe did. charitable, but I liked the joke. Okay. But also, it was kind of like, man, eh, would have been fun. You to still have wanted it. them. Uh, yeah, it might have been LOL. Lift off the lid of the mulled wine vat. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. Lift off the lid. That that, that works. Yeah, that was also my joke that I was telling. <laughs> that works. I like. It does it. work. Um, I think we should use LOL in that way a lot more too. I, um, Eagle Rock, cool name. Occidental College, kind uh -huh. of a fun. Occidental College. Occidental is a fun college. Uh, uh, Barack Obama's alma mater, I believe. Yeah, he went, he to, went to Occidental. Yeah, he did. It sounds that? like accidental. It does. It yes. Does, it does sound it almost does sound like, like that's accidental. where he so that's where he met Michelle? O occidental? I think they met in Harvard when he for graduate uh, school. Isn't there that like horny movie where they meet and they and like, isn't there? Yeah, there's like, it's is it like, a, am I thinking of some pornography? No, it's called like nighttime in <laughs> Chicago or something. And it's like, and I think it's one of those ones where it's like an imagined first date between Barack and Michelle Obama because it's not yeah. actually documented. Yeah, that's so weird. It's I don't like that see Celine Dion biography film. Aline, I watched yeah. it. Did, did you, you see was it? it good? No, I didn't. I've only heard about it on podcasts. It's a fascinating film. Yeah. Uh, the there's a. Flophouse episode about it. That's really that's where I heard about yeah, it. Yeah, it's and I think probably. I would listen to the episode before you watch the film because it, it's it's wild. The thing that's the thing that's good about I've it. I've got an idea. I might not do either. Yeah, you don't have to do okay. either. <laughs> but I was going to say the. I mean, I love the flop house. Yes. But I, yeah. Know, but. It's a it's a very. So the thing is, the director, the writer, director, star is a well known French Canadian comedian, um, or she might just be French in her, but she's in her fifties, but she plays Celine Dion through her entire life, including as a like four-year-old child and wow. they just they just do the thing it's not like they kind of digitally de-age her but they also just put a, an adult's head on a child's body and so it's it's a okay. really you know what jesus i was wrong i'm gonna listen to the flop house and i'm gonna watch this <laughs> it's a really wild movie i i overall enjoyed it but because just because it's so audacious but it's kind of like if if like eddie murphy made a clumps movie but it was like a, a drama like it was like this is the story of one right. of the clumps, and this is his entire life. I got a new rule. Yeah, sorry to be like Bill Maher, but I got a new rule. Chew Don't, rule. Chew rule. Okay, great. Chew rule. Don't show me the president nutting. I don't want to see the president nut. No matter what We'd president moved on. is, I know, but I just don't want to see it. Okay, any president. What about not Grover gonna Cleveland? do it? Not gonna <laughs> nut. <laughs> I'm just a humble peanut peanut farmer uh, from Georgia, but uh, I too nut. <laughs> 
Look at uh, look at this nut look I at that. farmed. Whoa! <laughs> Ask nut what your country can do for you. <laughs> I am not a crook. <laughs> I am nutting my pants. That's right. <laughs> so you're saying that Aileen, yeah, the Celine, the Celine Dion equivalent in this film was played by a French Canadian com- comedian. Yes, and she's like well known and she's like beloved in f- the fr- world of French cinema. She got yeah. nominated for the the French equivalent of the Oscar for this performance. It's like a good performance. But she's a comedian. Also- she's a comedian she's a in comedian. Quebec. She's a Quebecois comedian. I guess so. I wonder yeah. if she knows our old friend who's a French uh Canadian comedian, Gobert. Oh yeah. <laughs> Remember all those times we I used remember, to yeah. spend with him? I, up, it's, it's, I'm happy that someone finally said his name correctly, because we I do fuck that up a he's lot. He's very <laughs> particular Quebec, about that. He'll correct in Mo- you. In Montreal. That's yeah. why well, his family came down from Canada to right. New York. Yeah. Right. He was le roi of the Juice pour la Rire Festival in Montreal. <laughs> uh, Nutigery. <laughs> <laughs> Casey, our engineer in studio, and Emma, our producer, both said positive things about about spits. Casey, yeah. you love spits. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do frequent spits. I like to frequent it. Yeah, I hang out. You know, hell on, yeah, on Hillhurst, still live in the area. That's where we went today. I mean, the obviously. Los Feliz location. Yes. But but it, it's like because it's kind of it got a bar feel. You can just like hang out there and yeah. have a drink. Yeah, yeah. I uh, you know pop in with a few friends. We have a, a couple beers. Very you know, pleasant. You know had, had that goes. open air concept. Yes, yeah. yeah. And and, it, and it's interesting where chain restaurants have gone where the old days, like like the kind of bar and grill grill feel is like is like a TGI Fridays or a Chili's, this big enclosure, right. you know, that's got like a big kind of sports bar area. And now they're kind of like, okay, we'll do this more open air thing that's more just about like, you know, a kind of a casual hangout. Again, again akin to a gra- gastro pub. Uh, Emma, same thing. You're, you're a fan of Spitz. Yeah, I love Spitz. I used to go there all the time when I first moved to LA. It kind of has, if I remember it correctly, it kind of has like a secret garden feel. Like there's a lot of, like it feels like you're sitting in someone's garden eating food sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's true. Yeah. So they're really doing a lot to kind of like hide that it it is a chain. And I think people kind of are sometimes surprised by its sprawl. Casey just kind of rubbing it on his face that he goes there with friends and like has a good time. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't do it for work. Doesn't do it for work. How about this one? Someone get me a sock. Not socks. The cat. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Bill Clinton is nutted in this. Well, no, no, okay, right. I yeah. got you. Well, because also but he, need, but it's, he needs a sock immediately. <laughs> he, needs a sock. he needs a sock, not socks. And one of the sock. White House staff brings him the cat. And this, yeah. And he's like, no, no, not socks. Yes. Well, remember because he got into trouble because he had that that press conference and he was like mm-hmm. i did not have sexual relations <laughs> with that woman They're like wait a minute they're like hold on hold sir on. it depends on what the definition of nut is <laughs> <laughs> you've seen the blue dress that is a that is the the fa- the most famous nut of all yeah um i think you're probably right it's probably the most famous nut of all mm-hmm. i can't think of a more famous i hope to meet it someday a more famous semen stain in history <laughs> So we were there, and we were, the three of us went together. Mitch, this was your Mitch, initiative. You really, I'm you sorry. You really bring out the best. I'm it? sorry. <laughs> I am. I was just thinking. I'm sorry in my head. <laughs> the so, Mitch, this was your initiative. You were like, "Hey, we're going to record this afternoon with with John while he's in town." Glasses are and... all steamed up from embarrassment because I said semen. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you were really like, are from Massachusetts. I, a, I feel the same way. I don't think I would ever. Yeah. I don't like to say dick town. I don't like to say semen. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Everything's fine. This is going great. People are going to love this. Uh, we, but, but, but let's let's talk about spit. So we were yeah, going I mean, to we're going to get it to go. We're going to eat it here at the studio. And then Mitch, you were like, you know what? It's nearby. Let's just eat there. And which is partly why we started late. But it's fine. I'm glad we ate there because it was part of the experience. It was. I almost immediately regretted it when I got there. And I actually got there before we were supposed to be there at noon. I got uh-huh. there before noon. Uh huh. And street cleaning Wednesday, so parking was close to impossible. Uh, which is weird for that part of Los Feliz, which there are restaurants and stuff nearby, E Rustic wise. Mm-hmm. Um, great wings. We've talked about E mm-hmm. Rustic before. You've had the wings there, of yeah. course. Uh, a couple of cool bars, but like more up the street is where the activity is. Mm-hmm. But uh, so starting off, like hard to park around there. We got it all squared away. I, t- I took the train like an eight minute walk from the station. So I was, I was pretty. It was a good mood. Yeah. I, I, I move. I saw Hodgman outside. He found a spot pretty easy. Yeah. 
Um, I I drove. I had already circled around once, and I saw Nick walking up and taking a picture of the exterior of the restaurant, looking like right. a true lunatic. Yeah. True. I mean, check my Instagram <laughs> at John Hodgman to see the <laughs> visual evidence. Um, we so we uh, we get in there, Nick. I've been here a lot. Here's my here's my initial thought. I didn't. I actually didn't like Spitz the first the first couple times I had it because I love Mediterranean food. And I think of like when I'm thinking of good Los Angeles Mediterranean food, I'm thinking like a nice fluffy pita and right. some some chicken, juicy chicken kebab and hummus and 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 you know like uh, uh, garlic sauce. And this is this is place is great. It is just it's different from that. It's like a the the Donner wraps. Cat, there's a lot of cabbage in there. It's like it's very much like a sandwich wrap. It's a mainstream. Yeah, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't live in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. It's great to be back and seeing you in person. But when I go, when I go for Mediterranean food in Los Angeles, mm. same thing. Like I wouldn't think of Spitz. Usually, I'll go to their top competitor, Flems. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good Flem combo too. Actually, we did. We had a good Flem combo. Yeah. We talked about the the efficacy of prednisone treating mm-hmm. Flem over Flem production, which I'm taking it again. And I'm afraid of the fat I said, humps. we can't talk about this on the podcast, so let's talk about it now. And now look where we are. <laughs> we're back to it. We're so out of material. Here's a question. Have you ever been spat on? Spits? Ooh. <sighs> like, had someone spit on me? Has someone ever spit, spit on, on you in contempt, you mean? I mean, that's yeah. gotta be like that, right? I don't think so. I have, for sure. But this is in Quincy, you know, back in the Quincy. That's, what, an, intense, was it, that's an intense thing. Yeah, that's a real... Wait, was it, was it like a... What happened? Was it a deranged person? Was it someone who was angry at you? Was it an act of bullying? It's kind of a Dennis Nedry situation where, uh, um, I think it was a surprise spitting. I mean, like, okay. yeah, people mad at you, but I feel like that used to like happen. I feel like there was one friend in particular, I want I, one of the Quincy crew who would think he'd get mad. He'd spit at you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like into your face or at your shoes and contempt? I think it was just what? at you. You know, it was, yeah, it was, at, it was in contempt. Yeah, I guess, but he was like, I mad. guess it's not, you can't aim very well when you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, and it's not, it's like, it's not, but let's just say for hypothetically speaking, it was like, so would be like, hey, what the fuck, man? And they just like spit at you like out of nowhere. Yeah. Wow. It's by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you guessed it. We'll have to bleep it out. <laughs> no, come on. A hundred percent. No way. It was. That's so but funny. I also, <laughs> I also think that people, I think that like, it, I, like he wasn't the only person I ever was yeah. spat on by. I got spat on by a couple people over the course of, of time. That's well, why I've never, I've never been spat on. I don't think I've ever been spat on. I've I'm gotten spit on I'm, me. But... You've had, got spit on you? Yeah, I've, I've, I've had like other people like spit, like like it's like I'm Accidentally. Like spittles oh, coming right. or something yeah, yeah, or, you know. I've never intentionally spat at anyone. Yeah. No. But I've I've definitely accidentally s- spat on people while talking to them. Yes. Um. But my sister's a, a principal of a school and like, Spitting, it's like disgu- it is. It is truly disgusting. Yeah. A disgust- it's not something you should name your restaurant. It's not something you should name your restaurant at all. And I'm amazed that these two young college kids, yes, have had such such success. I think it's testament to the the food quality that people endure nausea in order to go eat the food. Why well, it's it's and it's pretty wild success. This is one of the faster growing, you know, I'd newest never chain heard restaurants. I had never heard of it. Yeah, and I've actually never been to Spitz. Here's part of my my thought is that you Mitch, you were talking about this earlier. LA has a lot of good Mediterranean mm-hmm. food. A lot of great Greek restaurants, a lot of great Armenian restaurants, a lot of great Persian restaurants. You know, there there's just like I I, I mean like I'm thinking of like a, like a local chain like like Zanku Chicken or you know like a once a one uh, location shop like Atari Sandwiches in Westwood. If I'm if I'm thinking for something Sidewalk like Grill, which Sidewalk Grill is a nice spot. Like it's like there are there are there are plenty of options. So I just would not think of going to Spitz. But that said. Hey, you go into Glendale too. You got Carousel Restaurant. You got some of these famous, like uh, Middle Eastern slash Mediterranean food spots. People that, who know the the that that you know that style of food will list off you know literally like twenty places that are mm-hmm. worth going to. And, but this, and, you know, yeah. but yes, but I mean, all of the I, I'm thinking as you list these places, like they're specific. They're specific. Yes, they're yeah. from regions. They were probably founded by someone whose family is from that region, right. for example. Whereas Spitz is obviously made by two college kids from one of them from Utah, Minnesota, you know? and Utah. Yeah, so they're, right. they're, they're, so there's a there's a there's a 
It's like an Asian fusion restaurant. There's an element of, of like appropriation and just sort of like, you know, kind of making things palatable to people who maybe aren't as as used to Mediterranean food. That's if, it. If, I any, think it's if good anything, food. I feel like it represents the the diaspora of these kinds of foods across mm, Europe. Sure. Because they have their Berlin style. Do you say right. Donner kebab or Donner kebab or? I always thought it was Donner kebab. Maybe Donner, it's Donner is what kebab. I say. That's I always I say. But whatever it is, I'm sure we'll get letters. Yeah, but, I'm not sure. You know. Donner is one of Santa's reindeer. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> right. So, so that's helpful. Okay. That's helpful. <laughs> that so maybe part. Donner is the way to do it. Might be Donner. Whatever it is. I mean, and we learned when we went there that uh, they don't stand on ceremony uh, when it comes to the authenticity of these products. 100%. No, they're not. Like I was like, they, they have a gyro and then they have a donor kebab. And I always thought that those two things were basically the, the same. Mm -hmm. And I'm, probably I'm wrong, but like, I know in Canada, if you get, if you go to a donor place or donaire place, as they call it there, you'll get a, mm, what we call so a donaire. Gyro. Yeah. It is donaire. So we asked Donner. Is Santa's reindeer Donner or is it? Do, is it? It's Donner. Donner. It's not donor. It's Do Donner. Not no, donor. donor. Donor is like someone who like donates to a like cause an organ or, or an, an organ. organ. Donor. Yeah. Donair. Maybe it is donor. donor. It could be. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think that's just a French Canadian pronunciation of you right. Know what I mean, it's like this. I mean, people say gyro or euro or yeah. gyro or whatever it or is. Or gober or gobert. Gober gobert. <laughs> I mean, let's call the whole thing off. Yeah. The point is. When we went up to the counter, uh -huh. and, I, and I said to the, the woman who helped us, who was very helpful. Doris. Doris was an Doris. absolute delight. Doris, same name as my grandma, mm -hmm. as my nana. I told you guys at our table, I told you guys that Doris, I said, that's the same name as my nana. And then on the way out, we say, bye, thank you, Doris. <laughs> and Mr. Hodgman here said, it's the same name as his nana. <laughs> And I was extremely embarrassed. Yes. And she was, and you know what? She, she was, had a great response. She was like, it's the same name. Like, it's the same name as a lot of people's It's names. a great, it's yeah. a great grandma name. It's a great grandma, great grandma name. name. Or, I mean, you know, or even a great, great grandma name. That works there too. Yeah. You know I mean, it goes back. It's a terrific name. Great contemporary name. A classic. But Doris was terrific. And, Doris and, was a delight. And, and she, if that's her pronoun, just rolled her eyes and said, it doesn't, we, we make no distinctions here. Yes. There's a uh, Doris Hero, Donair, Donor. It's just whatever. Exactly. It's all inter like you can have anything with any protein you want. Yeah, they're not worried about authenticity at all. Why well, Doris Griffin, my my nana. Mm-hmm. And uh I had an Uncle Peter. Oh boy. Oh yeah. really? Mm-hmm. And did you have a dog named Brian? There was a dog named uh -huh. he had a dog named Brian. Okay. This this my this this is extended family. So you probably, I'm just guessing you had a, you had a cousin Stewie. I had a cousin Stewie. Okay. All right. This is all New England. It's all trying. It's all starting to track. So we, so Doris helped us out. You order the counter. They bring it out to your table. Weirdly, their system has, and it, you know, kind of just speaks to sort of like the, everything there is like a little, it's a little try hard, but it's fine. It didn't really bother me, but like you, you don't have numbers. Mm. You have letters. Mm. So our letters were OP. OP. Mm. So they were going to bring it out to OP. Original poster. Yes, in, or overpowered. In, oh. Yeah, it's okay. another way. Video game parlance. Is that or, video game parlance? Yeah, but, in, but, in video, but on, uh, on forums, yes. On forums. Absolutely. Original, original poster. Uh, so they were, they're bringing it out to OP, and we'll, we'll start with our apps. We got a, a, a street cart fries, which are, the description is that, uh, that, that our famous fries topped with garlic aioli, feta, Onion, green pepper, tomato, olives, and pepperoncinis. Uh, and we got half uh, regular fries, half sweet potato fries. Um, those Dora's suggestion. We also got the Dokitos, which mm -hmm. were uh, like a Mediterranean taquito. Uh, it's lavash bread that's got that's stuffed with uh, with chicken, and then it's just got a bunch of the same sauce on top of it. Well, this should have been a streetcar named Desire because these things were fantastic. They were, yes. Street cart named Desire. Fuck. Street cart fries. What did I say? Street car? Yeah, well, you did, there's yeah. a thing that's called street car named Desire. No, that's what I meant. That's that's what my reference was. Right. Well, no, these okay. should have been a street cart named Desire because they were they were fantastic. Great, Emma. Do you want to clean that up in the edit so we just use Mitch's second take there? Just use. I the mean, second it was the same as my first take. Okay. Okay. Great. Fair. Yeah. Fair enough. It's your birthday. <laughs> it was just, it was the same as the first take. <laughs> Street cart named Desire. It was all very tasty. Very good. I like, hey, l l I'll say this. That garlic aioli, I think, was delightful. Mm. I, I really like that sauce. And there's a lot of it. They were really drizzling it heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, the fries that I yeah. had that were smothered with it, I, they were well fried. They were crispy. And then, you know, there's just a very flavorful sauce. It, it is the same, you know, 
array of 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 things that are that are smothered on top of it for both dishes. All the it's smothers all are the kind shit. of the same. Yeah, yeah. So there's like a street street cart fries. That's right. And same then desire. there's a street cart donair right sandwich. And it's the same ingredients ex- minus the fries. Yeah, different form factor. And uh, I thought the Dokitos were nice too. I thought they were more of a novelty. Like I'm not sure if I need to get the Dokitos. The again. Dokitos to me were the loser of the bunch. Yeah, I tossed in those fried pita chips at the last minute. That's Why? the other thing we got. Yeah. Why do you think those fried pita strips? You know, here's what. Here's the thing. And this is is kind of what Hodgman was saying. I got those fried pita strips on top of my salad. So I was like, that's kind of redundant with something I already have in my in bowl form. Yeah, uh, I do like the side of hummus for dipping, oh. but I just felt like those were. I thought the hummus was was quite good. Good hummus, yeah. I was hummus. I was quite I was quite surprised, and I would say, all to me, the stars of the show were all the the dips and condiments. So many dips. Wait, yeah. Mitch, you 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 asked for some tzatziki. We also got what else did we get on the zog. side? Zog. What's that? Zog. We got zog? a zog. Was it zog or zog? It's zog, I believe. Z h o u g u g. Zog or Zog? Zog. Zog. Z- 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 Zog. Might have been Zog. Whatever that sauce was, that was delightful. And then we got like a, like that's a spicy a, red that's sauce. That's a green spicy sauce. I'm yes. Not, I'm not familiar with them. They also had a harissa. A harissa. Yes, yes, could, yes. In a pump that you could take little little uh, vats of it back to your table. I like harissa. And I, I had to harissa. specially request their Berliner red sauce. Mm, right. That's what that was, This the spicier sauce. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. A tangy red spicy sauce that I really liked. And I had to request it because- uh, you know, there basically everything is modular, mm-hmm. and so there was the street cart donair wrap. Yes, this is what the both of you got. Which is, I did you both get beef and lamb? Yeah, and so, this is a garlic aioli with lavash chips, romaine, cabbage, tomato, onion, green green pepper, cucumber, and tzatziki. Right, and then there's the Berliner. Mm-hmm. Did you just read the Berliner one? And no, I missed it. Oh, right. So that's that's uh, that's the same protein, but with. Feta, roasted corn, cabbage, slaw, sumac. I really liked on the website, it didn't say cabbage slaw. It said cabbage claw. They didn't fix it. I liked that cabbage claw. Yeah. And this Berliner red sauce, which is this tangy sauce, which I presume if you get a donair or a giro or whatever kind of kebab that is the equivalent in Berlin that they put this on there. The point is we were getting a lot of food and it felt like to me one thing that we should do is try to sample as much of the food as possible. Yeah. And uh, and so I had intended to get the donair, the street cart donair wrap, but then Mitch said that he was going to get that. So I right. said, Mitch, we're getting a lot of food. If I ordered the Berliner uh, uh, donair wrap, maybe we could go have these and we could try them each. And Mitch said, no. Yes. Mitch refused yeah, to share with down. me. Okay. So this is true. <laughs> this is true. I'm gonna say this, and I could have gotten the I could have gotten the Berliner and ate it all myself. Yeah, but I really wanted that street cart. Here, here's, I re- you know, I dare say I even desired that street cart named Desire. Here, here's, here's, here's my, here's my thought. But the best part of the experience was saying to Mitch, "Can we split this?" And no. Yeah. So N- no, I didn't. Been there. I, I had no. First of all, I always <laughs> share with you. No, I, I I had I want what I want and I want all. I of said street. I I I already knew what I was getting going in. I said street cart Donner. I didn't realize that you were gonna you were gonna get the same thing. So well, that said, was the one that appealed to me the most. So I said street cart Donner, but I didn't know that that was in your. I didn't know that you had that. No, in it's chamber. not like you. It's not like you knowingly scooped my order. So yeah. I had no idea about his. So I said that, and I and I got and I got that. And I was fine and, with that. I got that with beef and lamb, and then you then you said to me, you said. Hey, do you want to share share this the, the Berliner Donner? Yeah, if I get the Be- Berliner Donner, we how about we like split and it half they, and half? And I said if they cut them in half nicely and it's easy, we could each have half. And, and I said right. no. Oh, and then I said okay. And then I went hmm. And then you go. It seems like you don't want it. And I said you're right. Uh-huh. I don't want it. Uh-huh. It is the truth. I yeah. didn't want as corn in it. It has corn in it. I didn't really want corn. Corn upsets my tummy a yeah, lot of the time. Fine. Right. So, so I just I didn't want it. And then the fact people, that he has to follow up, I feel close enough to Hodgman that I could say, you know what? No. Yeah. I don't want it. I don't want I didn't I know, want and it. I'm teasing you, and that's absolutely fine. And, and the I, truth is, I could have just ordered that Berliner myself. It's got Berliner red sauce, feta roast corn, cabbage slaw, sumac, cabbage claw, excuse me, plus cucumber, tomato, onion, tzatziki, fried lavash strips. Wrapped in lavash bread, it's all the same thing. Yes, but, um, yeah. It sounded gross to me too, man. <laughs> <laughs> this the sauce sounded good, gross to me too. So the, I, I, don't, I didn't, I don't blame you at all. The garlic aioli, fried lavash chips, romaine, cabbage, tomato, onion, green pepper, cucumber, tzatziki. Here's the thing: I've had, I've, I've done the Mediterranean donor, which is hummus, 
olives, feta, romaine, cabbage, tomato, onion, green pepper, cucumbers, and tzatziki. Things. A lot of All things. All of them are kind of close. The zesty feta one is, is pretty good, too, and that has, like, some uh, pepperoncinis in it. Um, that's my favorite one, the, 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 uh, the street cart Donner. And I, and I, and I've, I've tried them all. I've, I've, I've now eaten at this place a lot. When I first went, I was like, what is this? I don't like this place. Yeah. And then when, once you kind of get used to spits and you know what to order, I think it's a delight. So Hodgman, I did feel bad because no, I, I'm, I'm I, I tried just... to set, I was trying to set you on a different one. I was like, well, you do a day. And then, and then I, it was good. No, here's we... the thing, Mitch. I was, you know, I was. I was poking at you a little bit there, but the truth is, and this is, this is true for everyone. When you go to a restaurant, get what you want. There you go. Someone says, could you share half of this with me? Think about it. Do you want to? And if it, it's true, then yes. But if you don't want to say no. Today was a day I just didn't Today want to. Today you didn't want to. I wanted the, you wanted the street cart. You desired street cart. I desired street cart. And so we, we both got, got street it. Carts. Yeah. And you know what? I think it, it was, was the exactly right. right. I think it was the right move, and I and you were right to stand up for yourself. Thank you, and you and uh, and you know also you know I I dare say I was right for noticing you kind of weren't into it. <laughs> now so was I you right? Did not just say no. You're right. So, but was it right of me to flip tables and all of that? Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do, a little bit of an over when you went over to the game zone and you grabbed the Jenga and just started hucking them at people. Mm, that yeah. was not. Don't just do whatever you want. And it's weird that like previously I was like, I've never spat on someone. But as you know, I started saying, oh, yeah, this is spits. This is spits. Spitting at people yeah. left and right. Yeah, you yeah. kind of have to. Uh-huh. Yeah. And and so I apologize yeah. for that. No, you don't. You don't have to you apologize. Nothing to that. apologize for. I, I So I got the donair salad, donor salad, and I got that with falafel. I, I got a vegetarian entree. That was a salad. I thought it was a bowl. Well, this is the thing. It's it's kind of in that liminal space between salad and bowl because it had a lot of starch in it, but it was not like the the it was not it, it, you know because it had like garbanzos, it had lavash chips, but it was not like okay, there's a layer of like rice or something that makes it like a proper bowl. It was still very salady, I would say, but a, but a salad with a lot of starch in it. How was the falafel? Uh, more like fall good. <laughs> it was pretty good. I think it was not. <laughs> Not called falafel well, bad. <laughs> falafel isn't falafel. It isn't. There's no bad at the end of it. Fall awful. awful. Oh yeah, yeah. Full. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, here's what is. Here's what I'm gonna say. No, it, I feel like a dare, fool. How dare, it was, how dare you? It was fine. <laughs> uh, I think it was. I think it was pretty good. I think it was. You know, I've had better falafel. It had a decent amount of 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 crispness to it it was not too dry which sometimes you get that falafel and it's just like a total dry guy yeah. and this one had it, it, you know it, it, it was certainly helped by the ample amounts of, of tzatziki and lemon herb dressing that it had but i think it was it was a pretty decent falafel uh i think fall the, awful is funny because also one of my favorite seasons fall fall you, you're a fall fan mm -hmm. i'm a summer guy i mean that's give me those those summer rays what 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 do you consider summer here like May through August. Roughly. All right. So you're including the hot August and September, which are. Yeah, it starts to get really hot in August, but August is also like, it's like both me and Natalie's birthday months. Mm. So like that kind of has like a good, mm. there's oftentimes a vacation involved. So, you know. When's the last time we went on a vacation in August? Uh, you know, recently in recent <laughs> years. Oh, no, I think we went last year. Did you really? Did a little, did a little getaway last year, yeah. Um, Where'd you go? Yeah. Just uh, just Ojai, California. Not far. Oh, I want to talk to you about Ojai. I've never been there. Lovely. Off mic, though, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. It's, it's, uh, we'll save it for off mic. Anyway, we, we had a lovely time oh, there. I need to know. <laughs> yeah, I need to know as well. No, I think it's a, it's, it's a very, you know, it's, it's a really cloistered sort of, it's got kind of like the 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 hippie hideaway feel, but mm -hmm. also kind of like the resorty feel. Right. It's it, you know it's a nice place to spend a, a long weekend. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Anyway, it, and also for a place that's like an hour and change away from L.A., it feels like a different world, which is the main appeal for me. Awesome. It, like it's it's like even more so than going to like Santa Barbara or something. It's like okay, I really feel like I'm in a different part of the state. Anyway, uh, I had, had a lovely time there. Uh, but yeah, I, I like summer. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about falafel. Yes. And we're talking about this donor salad. This is a What's Gober's is... favorite season? Here's the thing. You ask him that. Yeah. 
and he has this like weird like abstract answer of like what is a season yeah right. and you're like jesus man yeah come on just say like winter or something yeah don't get all philosophical on me don't get all like first year you know philosophy major student on mm-hmm. me but that's like what he does right yeah and then when you get like when you boil it down to it, he just like finally he'll be like spring. Like you'll finally get spring <laughs> like, out okay, of it. That was yeah, the, the, the <laughs> all you had to do was say spring. Have a ten minute right. like and rant also, from like, you to hear spring. Spring's also the worst one. Yeah, don't, spring is don't the don't worst season. That. Spring is the worst season. It's fucking boring. It's the it's it's the horniest season. I think spring is pretty good. Oh, uh, the you're entire, right. Every uh, the whole earth is horny. The Jesus. people on it, the nature in it, everything is, you know, I'm talking about in our hemisphere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I think it, that is a good point. Spring is tops. I think I go summer, spring, I fall, love, winter. I, I love winter. I'm a winter man. I don't like this cold weather. I thought you, I thought you loved fall. I love fall. Yeah. I love change fall, your, winter. You changed your tune. Fall, winter, summer used to be Ober my favorite. himself as a, over here. I, I, as a boy, <laughs> f- as a boy, summer was my favorite. No yeah. school. Yeah. And Los Angeles is just different because it's, it's, I mean, it is hot in studio right now. It is hot. It's warm. Yeah, but today. it's February. Yeah, it's February. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like, who cares? Like winter out here is fine. It doesn't matter. The yeah. earth is over. Forget it. Yeah. That's a big issue. Yeah. But, um, but for me, fall good, like you said. And then. Winter. So the falafel was crumbly. It wasn't crumbly. <laughs> it wasn't too crumbly. Okay. I, I think my big issue with this is. Spring. Do you mind if I bring it back around to the. No, no, no. Okay. Hold on. Fall, winter, uh, summer, spring. That's my rank. You, so you say fall, winter, summer, spring. Mm-hmm. I say basically not not the exact reverse order, but I would yeah. say summer, spring, fall, winter. Also, and him saying it's horny makes me like it less. Yeah, I now sure. like spring less. Hodgman, how do you? Well, rank? I'm not. I'm not particularly comfortable during spring, but I I acknowledge that it's horny. Yeah. How do you How do you rank the seasons yourself? Why? I don't know. We're doing it's what we're doing. Uh, I guess, I guess, I guess I like, I like summer best. Hell yeah. I like summer best and then fall and then I like them in order. Summer, summer fall, fall, winter, spring. Huh? Here's the thing. Yeah, when when I was on the East Coast and you didn't come to Connecticut to meet me, mm-hmm. right? Um, in New Haven, we were right. going to. New- well, it's not that I didn't just not show up, I chose not to. Yes. Right. Okay. There's still a few places we didn't get to while we were down there, and Louis' lunch is one of them. And I really want to go you to know, Louis' lunch. I'm being a, I would like to. I would really like to go to New Haven with you. Let me know. It'd be a blast. Why, well, Louis' come. lunch? I'll come along. You're not going to come along. I would come along. You'd have to get in an airplane. If it's like hey, time to some or other time, I'll be over there. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm going to say this right here. We end our tour. We're doing a tour. Oh. We end our tour. Yes. in Boston. Yeah, really, and. Connecticut is what? How long of a ride is it? An hour and thir- 90 minutes? Hour How about 45? two hours? Two hours? Two hours. 90 minutes, two hours from Boston. Yeah. New England states are like California counties. Yeah, it's they're absurd. Nothing. They're yeah, so it's tiny. Nothing. So nothing. it's not a big deal. Yeah. You can drive down Louis' lunch, the creator of the burger. Wise. I've heard about this. Yes. Are you doing a show in New York where uh, I got, live? Here's the thing we got shows in Washington, D.C. New York City, New York where City, you live, where I live, and in Boston, and that's so that'll be a little mini tour. The dates or and venues have not been announced. But that's I, very I exciting to, to hear. Yeah, but yeah, and you'll have guests on. Well, of course, I have guests. Well, when you're in New York, tell uh, tell Carl and uh, and Davis <laughs> that I say hello. Hodgson, we would love to have you. I don't want to. We would in, love to have. I don't want to invite myself on. Any you're not inviting shows. yourself. No. We were going to ask you anyway. I yeah, would yeah. come and wa- I would just come and watch the show. I would have a great time. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have an internal discussion. Honest, okay. Honestly, honestly, if if it so happened, right? Can I can I be honest? That with you? I were yeah. now to to guest on the on the New York show. Mm-hmm. The whole the audience now is thinking, oh, we could have had Gabrus and Carl or both of them, and they would murder me, and then my children would have no father. I'll say this right now, and they would be right. No, they would be right to do it. We we're gonna have we're gonna have an East Coast guest. For we're like our plan is like oh we haven't even discussed who we're gonna we're gonna guest uh, gonna have on the show yet but we're like we'll have someone from the east coast because we usually fly someone out but then I we were talking Mitch and we remembered that Gober moved back home oh no so that is an op- that is, is an, an option op- for us for New York <laughs> he said he could, he'd yeah. do his one man show to open for us yeah. just kind of get the crowd hot people people want Gober I yeah. understand 
Um, Gober opening. Honestly, I just would like to hang out with you. I don't want to be a guest. Gober yeah, opening up with characters from around the world could be pretty great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it got him canceled. We don't, but one time, I, one time I was eating eating good. at a ho- at a hotel, uh-huh. and uh, Michael Shannon came and sat down. Wow. wow! Because he knew one of the people that I was eating with. Wow! And I was like, oh, hey guys, can I sit down? And he has kind of a weirdly like high pitched voice, like Weiger or David Lynch, given sure. that he's a uh, 30 foot tall Sasquatch man. Yeah. And scary. The freaks of show business, Weiger and David Lynch. <laughs> 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 and he did, and he, and I, <laughs> I mentioned that I was, I was after, I was in LA. Yeah. And then I was heading to Chicago to do a show. And he goes, Chicago? Well, that's my city. And wow. I said, oh, yeah. He said, when are you going to be there? I said, uh, well, it's next weekend, Friday and Saturday. Huh. I'll be there around that time. I'm like, oh, okay. So where are you doing it? I'm like, uh, I'm doing it at the Second City stand-up uh, venue called uh, the Up Theater, I believe. Oh, yeah, I know that place. That's great. I'm like, what's happening? Yeah, right. That's what's wild. On? What's going on here? He said, Friday, you said? I said, yeah, okay. Um, Michael Shannon, I don't want to be presumptuous, but uh, but uh, do you want a ticket to the show? And he goes, oh, I'm not going to your show. Hey, do you want this newspaper? And then he walked away. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Wow. It was great. That's amazing. And a free newspaper. Yeah. Um, I did get it for your newspaper. You were a lock to be in the New York show, and then your season answer was kind of bullshit, if you want my <laughs> true opinion. <laughs> Why? Hey, here, here's here's an idea. Why don't we go from New York to Boston? I don't go. I don't. I don't mess up your stage on any of these places. But we do. We record an episode at Louis' lunch. I mean, I love that's that. It's a great idea. idea. It's calling Weiger's bluff big time. He's gonna not be happy. I'll go to Louis' lunch. All right. Yeah. Supposedly, that's where they invented the hamburger sandwich. I've heard this. I've also never had Johns of Bleecker in New York for pizza. Can we no, take the I'm train not. to Connecticut? Yeah, of course. Of course we oh can. Oh, God. Yeah. That's great. You take the Acela train. Oh, my Fastest God. Fastest Amtrak trains in the United States. I'm I'm in. Yeah, hold That's on to your great. headband. Louis Lunch. <laughs> they make great hamburgers. Yeah. yeah. Invented the hamburger sandwich, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. hold on to your headband. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we got to get to our review. But I'm not going to go there with you. You guys want this newspaper? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with our fork scores for Spitz right wow. after this. If you love drinking coffee every morning, and who doesn't? I gotta have my Java. You have to check out Trade Coffee. Trade makes it effortless to brew better coffee at home. We empower coffee lovers to discover better coffee delivered fresh to their door. Trade Coffee is a coffee subscription service that makes it so simple to discover new coffees and make your best cup of coffee at home every day. Trade partners with the nation's top-rated independent roasters to send you the best quality coffee you can get, all handpicked by their coffee experts. And guess what, Wags? That includes decaf coffee. That's right. Because I've gotten decaf coffee from Trade, and I love it. So whether you already know what you like or are new to specialty coffee and need some help, Trade makes it easy and convenient to discover new coffees. They'll send it fresh to your home and on your preferred schedule, so you don't got to go out to the store, Wags. It's in your mailbox, for crying out loud. You know what? I love a light roast. I love just the acidic flavor you get from mm-hmm. it. I love the flavor of the beans I've been getting from Trade Coffee. I get whole beans. I grind them fresh. We're comedians. We love all types of roasts, but mm, we especially love coffee roasts. Yes. Upgrade your morning routine with better coffee. Right now, Trade is offering our viewers a free bag of coffee with any subscription at drinktrade.com slash doughboys. That's drinktrade.com slash doughboys for a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. Drinktrade.com slash doughboys. Do it. Wags, our next partner is Athletic Greens. And let me tell you, I take AG1, and I take it in the morning. Well, the morning for me. Sure. And you know what I do? I blend it up in some Greek yogurt. I make a little shake out of it. I drink it down, drink it with some water sometimes. And here's the thing. It's green, so a lot of times you go, this isn't going to taste good. It tastes great. Yeah. And you do it, and you have everything you need for one day. You got a pep in your step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel good when I drink it. I know that I've gotten everything done for the day. And hey, it's hard for me to keep up with a supplement routine that comes with a bunch of different products. Right. And you know, a lot of times, it hurts your tummy. It hurts your wallet. AG1 makes it so much easier. You get everything you need in mm-hmm. one scoop. And hey, 
I very quickly noticed that it helps get things moving. Yeah. I'm feeling energized. I feel good. And hey. Improved digestion. Hair and skin feel great. Supports your sleep. Why take a bunch of different mm-hmm. things when you can just mix one scoop of powder and water once a day? AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to do a lot. It's the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. AG1 is powerful because it's so easy to fit into your lifestyle, Wags. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010. It's older than Doughboys. Wow. AG1 gives you increased energy and mood support, making it easy to live your best life. You know, Mitch, we're always looking for life hacks. Mm -hmm. Life hackers, they call us. The world has become the net, the movie The Net. We're all trying to hack it. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to move faster. Yes. You know what? You can hack health with AG1. That's right. And hey, uh, Athletic Greens AG1 is the all-in-one formula that makes it easy for us to cover our nutritional bases every day. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients of the highest quality that give me major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. And hey, they got single-serving travel packs, which are great if you're on the go. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash doughboys. That's athleticgreens.com slash doughboys. Check it out. Do it. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with John Hodgman. Hello. And hey. It's time for our final thoughts on spits. Wow. So, Hodgman, a veteran of the podcast, you know how this will work. We're going to go around, each give our final thoughts, if you will, our closing arguments. and then By veteran, that... you mean I've been honorably discharged. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. I've, earned, I've earned a pension <laughs> and, and hospice eventually. Right, yeah. Um, but I am I'm, I'm, my thank you for your service no longer required. I understand. 100%. Uh, so, uh, well, and, and, then, and then end that by giving your fork score from zero to five. Your thoughts, your review of Spitz. So I, um, I, I thought the the atmosphere was. I mean, I I'll use the parlance of the youth. A little try hard. Yeah. A little a little fakey. Yeah. Uh, Mid. It, it felt a little fake fun to me. I thought the game zone felt a little fake fun, even though I I would have played a game of Scrabble with with you two and had a great time. Um, I loved the airiness of it. It did feel. It felt welcoming even though it was fakey it had a little bit of um airport restaurant vibe you know like those 100 percent. you know like you're walking you're walking through the terminal and there's a there's a fakey farm to table restaurant yeah. over there and then there's a fakey french bistro on the other side right that's you know what? what this felt like to me could do worse in an airport though i would enjoy no, the I setup agree. I, I would agree love this you. in an airport and i and i honestly um thought the food was pretty good um, I, uh, when, when, before I started to dig in, I don't want to spoil, uh, what you already spoiled earlier in the episode, mm. which is you liked it. Yeah. You were like, this place is a little try hard, but the food, I'm, I gotta say, I'm, I'm liking it. I'll let you go on. I was very excited because I hadn't dug in at that point. Yeah. I did not agree with you a hundred percent. I found the, the, m- my rap, um, and I don't know. If you had the same experience, Mitch, because you had the exact same rap, you may remember. I found it to be a little under-seasoned. Mm. I thought the food quality was yeah. all very good, and there was a ton of stuff going on in there with the shredded this and the added that. The textures were all terrific. I just felt it was a little under-seasoned. But, you know, the sauces were amazing. The harissa, the jug, the the Berliner tangy red sauce, the tzatziki. Mm. Um, I didn't put hummus in mine. But once I started dipping that stuff in that sauces, it came it came to life. I would have been very happy in an airport terminal to be eating this before boarding with the with my boarding group. Yeah, because I'm no longer Diamond Medallion. You're no longer Diamond. Well, now that I'm Diamond Medallion, di- I lost it, Mitch. I lost it February first. I got my bag tags the other day. Congratu- congratulations! And are you still in the? You can still get in the 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 Sky Lounge, right? In the Sky Club? Well, if Mitch is there to sign me in. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if it'll ever happen. Oh, you people disgust me. It's <laughs> <laughs> disgusting. I know. Look, you got, you're like, you're Mr. Diamond. You've got stairs. You don't have time for me anymore. <laughs> Diamond Jim. <laughs> Diamond Jim. This is, this is, this is, this is very sad to me. Yeah. Well, I had a good, look, I just, I haven't been doing as much traveling 
And Delta extended my diamond medallion status through the pandemic, uh, not, not just mine, but I think a lot of people they sure. sort of maintain that because just to keep you going on the game. More they like, did everything they could for me, short of inviting me to join Delta 360, the invitation only status program. Whoa, whoa wait a minute. I didn't even know about that. Yeah, well, I hope I hope someone at Delta's listening because I would accept that invitation. More like staycation. But land. the point is, the point is, I I can I can live with only Did you not hear that? What's that? I said more like staycation land. <laughs> now available in paperback. Uh, uh, I I would enjoy I would enjoy this if I couldn't get into the Sky Club. Yeah, to sup of their delicious Sky broth and other foods. I always do a banana. I do some sort of drink in a banana. I do, sometimes That's I good. That's couple, very healthy. Yeah, yeah. Take a couple uh, bananas. With hydration, some vitamin, whatever it is that they D. I guess anyway. Mm -hmm. I would have been very happy eating this food, and I was very happy eating it today. I thought the hummus was pretty spectacular. I thought all the sauces were great, and if I wanted some more spice, I could have gotten up and gotten some salt, but I didn't feel like it because I was having a good time with my friends in a cool environment where maybe some Jenga is going to go down. <laughs> uh, your fork score. Oh, right. Um, one to five? One to, one five. to five, yeah. One to five. What the? <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been a long time. By the way, when you do the the uh, <laughs> Munch Madness mm -hmm. bowl, that's right, bowl. It's just bowl. Bowl. It's just bowl. It's not the bowl. Bowl. Like Munch a, Madness like twenty twenty three, the Tournament of Champions bowl. bowl. It's not the. It's not like the Super Bowl. The bowl. Bowl. We threw a lot of ideas around, and we landed on bowl. There was okay. a good one. Was that the Super Bowl? And then I think the, Emma. This was you. Emma's pitch was a Super the Super bowl. bowl. And then Colin. The World Series of Bowls. Yeah, just asking for a, a yeah, trademark infringement lawsuit. Superb Bowl. Superb Bowl. Superb Bowl. Also good, yeah. Superb bowl. And then the World Series of Bowls, yes. right? Wasn't that, yeah. wasn't that the, yeah, that was good. Well, when, we that, went, when we I went hear... with just the very creative bowl. Yeah. Bowl. We had a lot of options. I like mm. it. It's fine. I'm with it. When I hear it, though, you know what I think about, Mitch? Who's that? Candlepin Bowling. New I... England's own. Handle pin bowling. It rules. Why has he never done it? I can't imagine how bad I'm going to be at it initially because I'm so like I'm such like a learning curve for any sort of physical activity. It's like much I, more challenging than ten pin bowling. Yeah, I'll have you know. Yeah, that would, that would take me a little. But bit. But you don't have a heavy ball, which is kind of helpful. The heavy know? ball, you, you I'm, I'm good rolls. with a heavy ball because like I like I'm I'm strong enough to deal with a heavy ball. Not me. Huh. And you know sure the you and the distinction. One of the main distinctions is that the mm -hmm. candle pin bowling is named for the the pins. They look like candles. Yes. And when you knock them down, they, the machine doesn't clear them out. So you can use what's can called use, the dead wood yeah. to, wow. to ricochet off. Like if you hit one to go spinning off to, to knock down others. He's going to stay a little while this time. We're going to get him. We'll right. get him to right. candle gonna, pinball. You're right. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. when that comes around, I'm thinking it should be, you know, rating on one to 10 candle pins. Okay. I, I love Louis that lunch idea. will be out of candle pins. I'm just, I'm just, it doesn't have to be that. I'm just offering you that to yeah. project. Uh, I'll say, um, I'll say, um, four, 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 four forks. forks. Very good score. Four, four Great forks. score. Four forks. Solid. All right, Spoonman. Mediterranean food. Is it, is it one of your favorite types of food? It is. It is. The Holy Trinity for me is, uh, uh, the Mexican, Italian, uh -huh. and Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Got food. it. Uh, Italian kind of falls into that category. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. Unless Red you're sauce. talking about Northern Italian, which is very different. I'm talking about, you know, I don't really think about that place too often, but I'm thinking of the whole boot. Like, give me the whole boot from head to, from the whole boot, from ankle to toe. You're thinking, thinking red about. sauce, pasta, pizza. You're yeah. thinking like the, Italian, the American, 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 Italian, American, Italian, American, American, American. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, but so not, I know that, you know, we could get like octopus and salad or whatever it would be Mediterranean. And yeah. Italian. You know, but we know, we, we, get we know it. what you mean. We get it. That's you my know, whole, that's, there's, there's no hummus in Sicily. That's what I'm saying. There's right, no hummus. That sounds like a great book, by the way. Um, that so the new travel book of travel <laughs> essays by humorous John Hodgman. There's no hummus in Sicily. You got your like your this author is fresh photo. air. Yeah, your author photo like your arms crossed and like one eyebrow Man, raised. If I did a if I if Vacation Land had been a bunch of essays traveling through Sicily and and it was called There's No Hummus in Sicily. Uh huh. 
I'd buy myself some stairs. At this I think. Point. I think <laughs> I'd be so rich. I think you would have been able. To, I think it would have been. A, I think you. I mean, it's still a possibility. Yeah. You hey, Vacation Land's a good book, but it's no. There's no hummus in Sicily. Now you know what's gonna happen is some angry Italian guy is gonna fucking email into show. There's plenty of hummus in Italy. What are you talking about? He's gonna be fucking pissed off. This is where I don't want to be associated with that slur, right? There. This is I'm, this is very close. not. I, I mean, not I'm, I'm, I'm 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 going over I into that. to Gober territory. This is very much like his show. Yeah. Uh, characters of the world. <laughs> His characters. Well, of the he world. starts in Italy, and you're like, okay, okay, all right. this isn't too bad. This is all right. Maybe he's Italian. Yeah. I don't know. And then he's like, now I'm heading east, and you're like, uh, oh, oh. oh boy. <laughs> Hopefully to Russia. No. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, Gober. We love uh, you. We love you. Um, we love you. We do love you. Uh. Anyway, I. You know, he's got this one kid. of the top three for you. <laughs> Uh-huh. Gober's got he's got two kids. He's got now. two kids. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was one that he was like, yeah, he was like really quiet about the second one. It's with a different lady, too, of course. Oh, yeah. sure. I'm just gonna uh, quick make a quick call to a professional colleague to let them know I'm going to be very late. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Dave Matthews? You know, I still have the voice memo. I still keep the voice memo of, of you that you sent to Dave Matthews. Yeah. You, Dave Matthews sent to you about me. Yeah. I was I was actually going to go meet Dave Matthews for coffee oh, and boy. invite you to come with as a surprise, but I just got a text from him saying, I can't wait any longer. I'm Fuck. Yeah, we were supposed to be wrapped up 20 minutes ago. Sorry about that. I don't care. <laughs> I, don't care. I just don't want to hear about Gober. <laughs> I'm here all, I'll stay all day. Where am I going to go? I got nothing. Oh, excuse me. Also, by the way. Up here on Hulu, March 24th. I got that. But between now and then, I'll stay here in the studio. Wow. There's also Gober does like, he's like, he's like, ooh, oh, now I'm in the South Pole. And we're like, what are you doing? That's a character from around the world? It's yeah. just like, cold guy? As like maybe are you like are you a research scientist or something? And he's like like no, no. He's like, no he's just he's just cold. <laughs> he's just cold. Cool. Now I'm Keith David in the thing. Yeah. John Carpenter's the thing. That would have been a take. Like that would have been like he would have. Oh, I'm saying something, but like yes. no, it wasn't even that. It was vaguer. Which at the end is Keith David the thing? Is you know you, yeah, you, you don't know at the end of the movie if either one of them are the thing. Uh, one of my favorite. Oh, movies, I know the Hoffman. answer. Do you really? Oh yeah. Oh, he said it before, right? Hasn't he said it or no? John Carpenter told me personally. Wow. Is that true? Yeah. He told me personally who the real thing is. Wow. That's amazing. I said, isn't the whole point for it to be ambiguous? And he said, no, there's one thing and it's boop. Well, can you say it and we can bleep it out? No, because I can't say it because it's bullshit. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I believed you. God damn it. I, I believed you too. One of my favorite movies. We're going to have such fun in Connecticut. We're going to have such fun in in New Haven. Um, I'll tell you what. Well, I was almost missed I know someone who works time. at Remember the that? Yale Daily News. We can get in there after hours. Oh, uh, it'll be a blast. Uh, I, don't know what to do. that's the, I might that's be the feeling sick after Louie's lunch. <laughs> um, I So, okay. So, look. The Thing is one of my favorite movies. Mediterranean food is one of my favorite foods, mm-hmm. Mike's. Um, I, I love it. I eat it a lot. It's also one of the things that... I order a lot online because you can also feel decent about what you eat a lot of the time. You're not eating anything fried. And here, it's a little it's a little bit more of a pub fast food thing. There's we had a plate of french fries, we had taquitos, and there's the fried pita chips, which I do enjoy. I like those I like those fried pita chips quite a bit. Um I wasn't impressed with the wraps the first time I went there, but that is till I found out Zog or Zoog. Or Zog, or whatever it is. I would really suggest you stop saying Zog. Zog seems wrong. Yeah. Neil before Zog? No, it's, um, that's a white supremacist term. Oh, oh no. Okay, all right. Oh. So, I, that's all I'm going to say. And I only know it from the movies. I'm not a white supremacist. Oh, yes. I'm reading it right now. It's an acronym. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now you tell us? But you know what else it is? It's a TV movie from 2018. That's what he's referring about to. About a keen but accident prone dragon who goes to dragon school. That's a lot of fun. That's what That's I was the referring we're talking to. Right. About. And the dragon discovers at when he goes to dragon school that there really is qualitative differences between races <laughs> and dragons. <laughs> 
I had no idea that that was a term. Zug, I'm going to say from here on out. Yeah. Zug. 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 Until I found Zug, I loved Zug. Uh, I'm a huge fan of, of, this, of this. It's just a sauce delivery mechanism wise. We've talked about this before. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and when you're putting on tzatziki or, or Zug, uh, I'm having a blast. I, I really like that lamb and beef combo. I've had the chicken. I've had a, a lot of. And you know what? They have a fine Greek salad. If you do the wrap and a salad, you feel pretty good for lunch. It's not a bad lunch. Um, I got to go. Look, the place is a little try hard. I was going to try to be like a, I, I guess mid is not, I said that earlier. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, I don't know if I would call sitting down at that place like my cup of tea. Sure. Would younger people call it daddy that's, or whatever? Maybe. I don't know. But that's weird because you suggested it. I did, you but did I, go I do yeah. want us all sit down and eat together. I thought it would be nice. It was I have I have the full text thread. It went back and forth for quite a while. It did, but you know what? As Mitch was trying to convince Weiger to go to it, and Weiger's like, why do we have to just eat it in the studio like monsters? Yeah, I thought it would make our lives easier. And then, and then you said, no, let's do it. And then I was like, I'll just... I'm for whatever option provokes the most resentment so we can talk about it on the podcast. Right. Let's get in the break room at HeadGum in front of all the hunks and fucking <laughs> in the dark. We're in there like fucking trolls. Oh, excuse me. I just need to go grab my protein powder. What's up? What's up? What, what the, stinks in here? Yeah. I'm, we're recording the hunk cast in a little bit. You guys going to be out of there by three? All right, cool. It cool. wasn't for you, though, to sit there. You decide on, on, on in reflection, you wouldn't go there. Cool, you guys going to be out of there by three? Cool, we like to Febreze it down for a little while before we get in. <laughs> oh, sorry, my hog is hanging out of the bottom of my basketball shorts. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Jesus, it's scraping across the ground. <laughs> um, anyway, a bunch of hunks here. Um, but you know what? I'm sure those hunks would enjoy it. I think they would have a good time at, at the restaurant. Yeah. Casey, you enjoy sitting there having a beer. It is, it's a, it's a well, nice- he has, he has friends. Yes, yes, yeah, friends. I do sit there with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> that was established. A good open, they got big open windows, Wags. It's yeah. good, especially nowadays. Uh, True. They were playing, uh, they were playing The Cure when, when I got in there. That was some, really cool. They were playing some cool music. And then they, and then they dropped, they, I mean, they. There were some cranberries that were played. They did Two Princes by uh, The yeah. Two Doctors. Princes. Which, that was a mood. It was a good, a good 90s playlist. I'm going four. I can't go below four. Folks. No, that's exactly how I feel. And I, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I go four and a half, but maybe 4.25 forks. That's what I'm doing. Four forks one time. That's right. So with both of your scores, again, it falls to me mm -hmm. to determine whether or not this is on the outside looking in or actually welcome to the club. That is the Golden oh, Plate Club. It's true. And we're going to, we're going to see if that happens right now. We're going to see if it gets into the, the Sky Club, if you will, of Doughboys, mm. the exclusive really, enclave. Really rubbing it in. Mm -hmm. For the finest of chain restaurants. Really rubbing it in. I agree with both of you that this is kind of a little bit more fast foody than, you know, just like, a like a, yeah. it, it's not as health forward as I kind of expected. Like, like even my salad was a little bit indulgent. Uh, for instance, the garbanzos not being proper garbanzos, but being deep fried. Like, they're right. like crispy, and they're they're like little, you know... They, they get like the texture of wasabi peas and they're a little greasy and yeah. the, the, the pita is also fried. It's, it's just like some unnecessary like, frying on yes. when we came in was like, I love that place. You can get a salad on top of fries, which yes. is kind of great. It is cool. But you can add fries to pretty much anything on the menu. Hang on. You want to hear me make what might be my most Doughboys joke of all time? Please. Please. You referred to this restaurant as try hard. Mm-hmm. I might argue that it is fry hard with a vengeance. That's, that's really good. That's really good. Pretty good. You know what? Another one that I made that I that made me think of the Doughboys when I was on tour. What's that? You have a Disney Plus. You know the Star Wars show Andor. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, Andor. Why not both? <laughs> that's, it's unfortunately too funny to be a Doughboys <laughs> joke. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's really good. good. Mitch still hasn't why seen Andor. I'm trying to get him to watch Andor. Why not both? Yeah, why That's not my both? Question. I gotta watch Andor. I'm yeah. gonna watch Andor. It's really good. Andor's great. It's really good. I'm gonna watch Andor. Th this I think is kind of the uh, of a microcosm but of make up your mind, Andor. Make Just up like your mind. make a statement. Yeah. The the microcosm of the vibe within Spitz, their bathroom had a sign up in, in instead of like in, where where it normally has the gender marker yeah. that has a a you know silhouette of a man, silhouette of a woman, silhouette of a like Person in, yeah, of a, a, just a, a generic, generic person, you know, the, yeah, person in a wheelchair, a baby, 
an alien, uh, a creature with two heads, and then a Spartan, uh, a Spartan warrior with a shield and a spear and a helmet. And it says underneath it, whatever, just wash your hands. Which is like, okay, that's an inclusive message. That's the nice. Spartans were well known for their inclusivity. Exactly, yes. Historically speaking. But it, but it's also like just like a little like, uh, a little exhausting. A little, you know? cr- a little cringe. A little cringe, a little yeah. Cringe. And that's kind of how the, what the overall vibe of the place is. But the service was great. Doris was an absolute delight. Uh, very helpful. And uh, I, I think it's a, it's a decent value. You know, we got a lot of stuff and we didn't completely break the bank. You could get yourself a lunch for $15. It's not, not bad it was these quite days. Filling. Quite it filling. was filling. quite filling. Yeah. A le- sure. Doris said we 100%. did a good job ordering too. She's yes. like, you guys did a great job with what you got. I said, oh, well, Doris helped. She, she did. She definitely helped. And I, you know, I, I think it was a, a perfectly capable Mediterranean salad that is like a tier above what I would have expected. So for that reason, I say it was like full acceptable, not full awful. Very much so. Full acceptable. <laughs> very much so. Uh, I say to Spitz, welcome to the Golden Plank wow. Club. Four forks. We are wow. ballpark buds here. We are we are wow. kind of in a hand holding club. Uh, we're I'm all the only the one who's. I was. I'm almost on. I mean, I kind of was on the edge of my seat, literally, but only because I'm sliding down in my own sweat. <laughs> Can I ask, uh, John? Because before we get to our segment, you, I, I was curious about your shoes, and you said we were going to save it till on the podcast. So, can you tell us about your shoes? I'm wearing some sneakers, which yeah. I've put up on the coffee table like a real asshole. No, this is great. It's a power move. Uh, and I apologize for that. They are there, and I get no sponsorship for this. Hoka, H O K A. Mm-hmm. I thought that they were Hoka. The whole the company name is Hoka One One, mm. but I've been told that that's incorrect. It's actually Hoka One One, mm. and there and I I got some of them uh, w- when I was uh, tra- traveling. I needed some new sneakers, and I went into a cool shoe shop, and there are a bunch of cool sneakers around, and I saw these, and I said to the very cool young person. What do you think about these uh, sneakers? And they said, "My dad and his friends swear by them." I'm there like, you go. "All right, yeah." The, to complete the cycle spot. of humiliation, I now must buy them. <laughs> They're very comfortable, and they come in very cool colors. These are some that I got as a gift for the holidays. Yeah, they look great. Oka one one. This they're... is not a this is not a a plug right. for them. A plug would be please watch up here on Hulu, March 24th. It's a really good show. Everyone in it is terrific. Check it out. But what were you? What was the other thing you were going to ask about? You're moving on. Oh, that was you're moving on to the new segment. Yeah, moving on to the segment. Yeah. Yeah. Before you do though, I just want to say, you call this restaurant a little try hard. Mm-hmm. I would say that it's maybe, and this is my punch up. Uh-huh. I would say that it's maybe fry hard with a vengeance, co-starring Justin Long, my friend from the ads. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's your friend from the ads. He's your friend, friend from, from the, the ads. ads. He was great in Barbarian. Oh my God. He was so great so in Barbarian. Great. That movie is terrific. What a what a pill. Uh, uh, Drop King, our, our buddy Robert Persinger, saw it five times in theaters. Just Jesus, absolutely loves Drop Barbarian. King? What the hell? Happy birthday does to he Drop have a, King. The, happy belated birthday to the Drop King. Does he have a, a, a disorder where he can't be surprised? <laughs> <laughs> he, he liked can't, the movie. He can't remember when things surprise him. <laughs> Nick, after your whole bathroom spiel, mm-hmm. uh, I can assume that you're playing Hogwarts Legacy. Is that correct? <laughs> There's two bathrooms, and that's it. That's it's supposed to be. I never really cared about Harry Potter. It yeah. feels like a little private schooly to me, doesn't it? Very much so. It's a fu- it's, it's fucking from the UK. They're class obsessed. I prefer what do you uh, expect? The, the story of Zog who goes to the races. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, uh, it, it, that was our review of Spitz. Oh, mm-hmm. I remember what I was going to say. Spits more like swallows. Wow. But it's good. With a Z on the end? With a Z, yeah. yeah. But it's good, though. But it's good. I guess that's good. I'll put it in the intro. Uh, hey, I got a food stuff. We're going to decide if it's worth putting in your mouth. It's snack or whack. Wack said, if he said, is Spits going to be on the outside looking in? A song from the play The Point that I was in as a, as a boy. It's National Tootsie Roll Day. And as of this episode's release... And so I have a Tootsie Roll for each of you. I have not had a proper Tootsie Roll. One I'll, of these big boys. I'll take boys one and pass forever. it down, grade school Thank style. You. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Thank you. So these hey, are the these are the long you, guys. Thank you, buddies. It's nice to see you. Oh, how delightful! All right, the long boys. Yeah, these long. are these are like the you know the five inchers, and and they're squared off. I forgot the Tootsie Rolls are not. They don't roll. No, they do not roll. They're squared off. Emma, do you got a take on on Tootsie Rolls? Are you a fan? Um, 
I Tootsie Rolls are one of those things that like if they're around, if someone has a big bowl of Tootsie Rolls, I will eat them all day long and I won't be able to stop myself. But it's really? never the candy I choose. Yeah. It's like I think yeah. it's just like it's like chewing on gum almost. It's like just like an oral fixation. It's just like satisfying to eat. I don't know why. Do you ever get the big boy? The the full size? Uh yeah, sometimes. I like the little nuggets. Little yeah, nuggets. that's that's what I'm normally associated with the tiny little ones. These these big ones are are a, a rare. I haven't had one of these in forever. I feel like the I big ones one of these are harder to either. chew because they're so intense to bite. I like right. the little like single single bite size. Let's be honest too; they look nasty. The they look nasty. Like they look like dogs of shit. I mean, they look like they look like shit. Tootsie Roll is always Halloween bag ballast for me. Like just mm. immediate. Like if I accidentally got one, I was mad. Let me tell you something. I'm kind of liking that bite. It's very chewy. Mm -hmm. And that's a big issue with me. There's just that chewy, that that ooey gooey, so soft and chewy texture. It's sometimes a little much. I'm just hoping that it'll melt in my mouth because I know if yeah. I actually chew down on it, I'm going to have that in there for the next five days. I hate having stuff stuck in my teeth. It drives me nuts. It is. It's but flavor wise, it's not as bad as I remember. Yeah, it's a little, I mean, I feel like mostly what you're taking, what you're tasting. I'm looking at the, the ingredients here. I think most of what you're tasting is like oil and sugar. It is. It's a chewer. Sugar. It's not very chocolatey. Syrup, I'm sorry to be talking this way, but I just don't want to chew down. Cotton candy, sweetie, go. Let me see you, Tootsie Roll. That's the song. Right. Um. A good song. Is great it a good song. Is a great song. Is it a great snack? I'm going to say this. I can take it or leave it. You know what? The yeah. roll never bothered me anyway. There you go. I'll take it or leave it. I, 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 that, I took a small bite. Yeah. And I'm saying this on the Doughboys. I'm looking right at camera three. I'm never going to have any Tootsie Roll again in my life. Uh, this is the last time. I you're going to go to the grave without another Tootsie Roll? Yeah, easily. Easily. I, I, first, I, first of all, it's probably going to happen in... Soon. <laughs> Second of all, I had no desire for this, and this did not spark it. I mean, I admit it's what it is. It's exactly what it is. I shouldn't take a second bite. It's a classic. It's a classic. I feel I, like a dog that you gave peanut butter to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think this is a. I had a, I, I, I had a I had a fractured molar removed. Oh my god! I still got a hole there. Ugh. Uh, where because they're waiting for it to heal up before they put in the fake the fakey. Yeah. I could put a chunk of this Tootsie Roll in there and it'd be there for two years. <laughs> They'd call me Tootsie Roll Tooth Hodgman. They would call you that. They would. Well, I said it on a very popular podcast. I, I think the, 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 I agree with you that I never need to have another one of these again. Like I, I'd like, I might have another one of these again someday, probably for some bullshit not, related to the show. You're not brave but... enough to rule it out with, with me. I don't, you're not going to join the no more roll club with me ever. All right, fine. I will never have another Tootsie Roll yes. again in my life. Yes. I don't need this. This is, You know why? Because I like this as a kid, but as an adult, this is fucking whack. I don't need it. I'm, I'm swearing off of Tootsie Rolls. I don't need, I I don't don't need, need this, this. I don't need this either, Camera 3. I have, I have my friend Nick, and I have my health for now, and I have God or whatever. I don't need you, Tootsie Roll. Get out of my life forever. Goodbye. Wow. I feel like I should take another bite of this. No, last no, Nick, no. <laughs> we, made, we made a pact. Oh, that's it. This is it. No, I, now I can't. I can't believe you. To your pact, I'm going to quote George H.W. Bush. Nut going to do it. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am going to have a Tootsie Roll again, especially the flavored ones. I think the flavored ones are fun. What are the flavored ones? There's now? like strawberry. There's strawberry. And stuff right. And right, 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 right. Those are They're, kind of gross. Yeah, they yeah, kind of are, but they're all gross. It's look, it's it, it's like kind of Americana to me in some way. I, I, Tootsie Roll is like fun. These big ones are hard to. My jaw was hurting. It's too much chewing. I have to it's say that chewing. these were. This was. I will say this is the best Tootsie Roll I've ever had. Mm -hmm. In so far as it's hot AF in here, and they are basically melting because yes. the ones I remember from Halloween night. Were really dense. I and, was wondering, but you just cold. have did you have weak child child teeth? That's what I wonder too. You're, did I have weak child's teeth? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like because I remember did like I have weak child's teeth. 
wow, you didn't share your sandwich with me. Now you're now you're you're dissing my teeth. You were talking about your molar issues. I think maybe you had sheep fucking the, the little weak child's teeth. Boy, I never thought I'd see the day Mitch would would turn heel on me, <laughs> and start bullying me rather successfully. Oh shit! My tootsie roll fell out of. Oh, okay. Mitch, it's on my lap. Pants. My tootsie roll is on my lap. There, the spell is broken, everyone. <laughs> the tootsie roll is on my lap. Mitch is no longer a bully of me. It does look like a turd. Yeah, it's disgusting. Oh no, it didn't leave a stain. Oh, my pants need a washing, anyways. Um, how did it? How did it feel to be destroying me, though? <laughs> you were with, I was yeah. I, I mean, it felt like it felt like that might have been on. I'm saying me too as a child. Oh, okay. I remember it was like hard to eat. It was though. hard to it was hard to eat. And yeah, I had weak I had weak children's teeth. I will eat a tooth. I'm a weak roll tooth. Again. I wow. was a weak. And tooth. you know, you I, I feel like you were slightly a weak tooth. Yeah, um, you were right. That's why it hurt so hard. Sweet tooth, twist metal this summer. Um, I'm gonna go with snack. Wow, wow. Two two wax, one snack. I don't even think you could ever describe this as a snack because to me it's too sweet for a snack. Yeah, I can't imagine having this for a snack. Like, hmm, I'm feeling a little uh, peckish. I'm gonna have myself a giant, a giant turd-like tootsie roll yeah. at my desk. More of like a, a, a treat it or beat it. And I'd say beat it. Get right out of here. Right. Yeah. Beat it. Well, you say beat it, but you say treat. Treat it. Treat myself mm -hmm. to a Tootsie Roll. I mean, you're not going to get these all the time. It's a light snack. It's an American classic. It's an American classic. I just like, as an adult, I have no reason to ever eat this again, and I won't. Wow. I'm, I said it, and I meant it. I don't know whether I'm going to be checking in on you. I mean it. I'll get rid of this thing soon. But you still have it in front of you. Yeah, but I'll, I won't be for long. Don't stop, you know, don't use that as a crutch. Throw it away. I will. Throw when it. we're done recording, I will. When we're done recording. Uh, hey, happy Tootsie Roll Day to all who celebrate. Uh, just like a restaurant by your feet. You know who celebrates today? Gober. Oh, my God. Remember he was like, there was a time where he was like, he's like, he's like, oh, I survive on ramen and Tootsie Rolls. We're like, why? Yeah, I was like, why? Yeah, you're, don't you come from a rich family? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You're he's just like, like LARPing as like a starving student because you want to like be, like you want to seem authentic. And also why Tootsie Rolls? Like I get the ramen is like a meal thing. That's like a classic thing. Yeah, yeah but like Tootsie Rolls throw in a mix didn't really make any sense. Yeah. Anyways, we love the guy. Well, and then oh, you like, if you look at the back of, of uh of the Tootsie Roll wrapper, it says Tootsie Roll Industries, a subsidiary of Gober Pharmaceuticals. And then it all starts making yeah. sense. <laughs> you remember that guy that we all knew together and we knew him for so long? Mm -hmm. and Who's this? We we're like, this guy, you remember this guy? He was like, I'm someday I'm gonna be a member of the US House of Representatives. And we we're like, no way, Louis Gomert. That's right. Yeah, I remember oh, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a guy. <laughs> yeah. Save that joke for love it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. He's doing great. And then there was that girl that we all went to college with, and she also said, I'm going to be a member of the House of Representatives. And we mm. said, it's not possible. Yeah. Lauren Boebert. I remember this. I remember yes. Boebert. <laughs> remember Boebert. We were, and we were, as far as college friends go, we were, the four of us were inseparable. <laughs> 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 Hanging out on the quad. Oh, yeah. Ewing, Hodgman, and Bobert. Yeah, all in sacks. college right. together. Right. Dining hall. Hey, just like a restaurant value feedback, let's open the feedback. And we have a voicemail today. Emma, if you want to cue this up for us. Hey, Doughboys. This is Wesley from Atlanta. I have called in the past and I uh, got nervous and hung up. Wow. But, uh, wow. I'm a big fan of ET the Extraterrestrial. I run a Twitter account that's all about ET. And my question is. <laughs> If you were trying to befriend an alien, mm. a nice friendly one, mm -hmm. right, what kind of candy would you use mm. to lure him? Or it doesn't have to be candy. What kind of food would you use to lure him into your home? Like uh, Elliot famously used Reese's Pieces, and E.T. was a big fan. So uh, what would you use? Thanks. This is a great question, Wesley. Uh, we, ha we have a sad follow-up. Uh -huh. um, Wesley died of fright after that message, <laughs> which is really sad. Well, he gave his all. Yeah, at least he Thank went you out for with your bang. sacrifice. Remember Bobart was really cool, too, back in the day? People She's change. like, Bobart, like, Dobart. And we were like, that's funny. That's funny. That's like Simpsons. That's right. She's making cool references. And then, and then Gober fucking Mencia'd it. Yeah. He started doing it in his act. Yeah. Or like that's not your joke. 
And he's like, what? It's like, I, it's my joke because I say it. It's like, that's not how it works. And that's kind of where Bobert started going right. She she was like, this is a betrayal from someone I thought was a friend. Mm. And yeah, she just sort of. She's still talking so thinking about the caller's question. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I think that if you're, it's got to be something in the Reese's Pieces form factor. Mm, yeah. If you're going to leave a trail, if you're trying to tempt a thing into a house. Or a lab, so mm-hmm. you can alien autopsy it, I suppose. That's another reason you might want to. Jesus. Yeah, well, look, think, uh, I mean, look, think of what we could learn about the universe and ourselves. That's true. If we just tore that alien's body apart. Why does he turn gray? We need to figure out why he turns gray. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I. So, but, so that's my feeling. So ha, um, Reese's Pieces, I think, works. Mm. I, I think. I would... If you can't get the, the rights to use M&M's. I have. Mm. I would go with Reese's or Reese's. How do they say you say it? Reese's, I think, is a pro is how it's supposed to be pronounced. But Reese's is a regionalism. Reese's. Okay. I, and I'm then Reese's. there are people who say Reese's. Reese's. I've heard Reese's. that too. Yeah. That's what we did. Reese's. Right. Uh, I, I. You know what I do? Reese's peanut butter cup. You Just know what? Cup after cup, a trail of cups. Trail of cups. I'd follow that to your door. Yeah. It's better than. I, I, look, pieces are Reese's, Reese's pieces are okay. But give me the peanut butter cup. Give yeah, I don't want peanut... one great flavor that goes great on its own. I want two great flavors that go great together, chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah, give me that give me that strong tasting peanut butter yeah. and chocolate combo. You're going to you know what? There's going to be more than ET at your door. You're going to probably get a bunch of aliens there. You're going to you're going to you know what I mean? Alf, the whole sure. gang is going to be there if you put Reese's. The spaced invaders, they mm. might show up. That's what I'm saying. I might do a line of dry gin martinis. That's not bad. I think the, the this is that you know I'm thinking again about just luring an alien in, and I kind of feel like, you know, you never know. Sometimes, and I, I who knows what the the biology of extraterrestrials, but like I know like a lot of non-human. That's why we got to tear them up. I, I, That's I'm why we got to tear Cut them open, them up. See what makes them tick. Uh, the but, and I'm I, not even talking about using a scalpel or anything. Just <laughs> hands. Well, depending on how big they are, <laughs> you might be able to do that. Just. <laughs> But if they're like not V size, you're gonna need a bone saw. Jesus, if they're you know, gigantic. Oh, that's that's true. Well, yeah. yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I was thinking like a little one. No, yeah, if they're like a little like, like gray, a gray, you might be like able to gray. like disassemble them with your hands, like a you know like a forest creature. Yeah, yeah, but we'll see. Okay, so you're luring them in with what? I think I'm thinking fruit by the foot because Whoa, that's pretty good. It's all like it's one continuous piece, so you can kind of unspool it and sort of you know right. reel them in. Right. And then also, I know dogs and cats who are you know. Friendly and associated with anim- with with people, like you know, they can. You're saying they you're not for Wally companions. Yeah, but they had they you can't give they them can't the dog chocolate. You can't give them peanut butter. Chocolate, yeah, right. So, I mean, Wally and Irma wouldn't eat it, but if this attracted Alf, that's also an issue for all Wally and Irma. So Alf, eats yeah, that's cats, true. A line of cats. cats. Yeah. yeah so I'd have cats. to break his neck, as mm-hmm. I've said before. Um, but I also feel like you know a lot of uh, especially. Can I tell you something though? Mm-hmm. His, his just so you know, his neck it's really a wrist. Wow. When you think about it. Yeah. Alf. Alf's neck is a wrist. Alf's wrist. Right. Someone's, someone's, <laughs> someone's wrist. wrist. <laughs> I don't want to blow your mind. I never, that is, that is wild. Yeah. It makes me upset, honestly. <laughs> when you're really thinking about what's going on in there anatomically, it is a little upsetting. It's a little upsetting. Yeah. You know what's funny is that I wrote an odd, like I wrote a story, like my experiences with Gober. <laughs> and I like, and I wrote it and I spent like years on it. Just so you can't use this, I'm going to cough real loud. Um, <laughs> um, no. It took me years to write it. And then I, I gave it to my manager titled Mac and me. Uh-huh. And then I found uh-huh. out that there was, a, there's a movie called there's Mac and me. There's a Paul Rudd me. movie called Mac and me. And yes. That, that was, so I was like, forget it. Just forget the whole thing. I, I just tossed it out. Well, your manager was like, you could retitle it. Yeah. And, and I was you like, just like, you know, uh, you're like, you put your foot down. You're like, that has to be this title. <laughs> it has to be Mac and me. I have not seen the famous E.T. ripoff movie Mac and me. Is there a Reese's Pieces equivalent in that movie? I th- oh, fuck. I want to say it's McDonald's. It's got to be a McDonald's, McDonald's, yeah. McDonald's yeah. French yeah. I think there's a whole thing where they go to a McDonald's restaurant, and it's like basically like a five minute ad for McDonald's in the middle I of the bet, movie. I bet McDonald's or any French fries would be more effective in luring. McDonald's French fries is a great, great answer. Here's the yeah, thing. that's the what cool I was thinking. Cool down factor mm-hmm. is tough. Right. 
Well, but but here's the thing: like a lot of a lot of uh, in particular, like the candy we have in America that are super processed and mm-hmm. you know laden with additives, they're just like so sickly sweet if you're not used to it. And I could see like aliens who maybe you know if you're coming from like a Pandora like planet where you you're not less like processing your food super heavily, that then like it might be just like aggressively sweetened and chemically if you're giving them a piece of candy. So yeah, something like a French fry might be a little bit less processed and a little bit more palatable. Well, then why not a line of plums or delicious peaches? There you go. Nature's candy. Yeah. Throw some fruit down there. That's probably what, you know what? The aliens would probably like that the most. Yeah, yeah. give them some fresh fruit. Mm-hmm. They might even like like a, some raisins. Give them some raisins. That sucks. I know. That's. The, I mean, you're right, but that I know. sucks. I know, but that's science, Mitch. It's not always fun and games. It's true. Sometimes you need raisins to lure an alien in so you can cut it open. Stem to stern. If science, if science was more fun in games, maybe I'd be in a different field right now. But instead, here we are. Here we are. Yeah, here we are. Uh, let us know what what food or candy specifically you would use to lure aliens out there. Hashtag ChewFO. We'll share some of our favorites. And if you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com. Or leave us a vo- voicemail. Like uh, Wesley did at 830 Godo. That's Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. The worst that could happen is that we make fun of your question. Um, 830-463-6844. And to get the Doughboys Double or Weekly Bonus episode, join the Golden or Platinum Play Club at patreon.com slash doughboys. And hey, chat with us and Doughboys Snack Pack on Spotify Live. Hang out, chat with us every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Listen live on Spotify. John Hodgman, uh, everyone, go ahead and check out Up Here Up on here Hulu, on March Hulu. 24th. And also on Hulu, all 10 episodes of Dicktown. That's right. Created by me and David Reese are Ask still guests. there. And and we, and we you can go just have a whole night of Hulu. And unlike the podcast, it's our podcast. It's funny stuff. Yes. It's good and Oh, funny. that's very kind. And the Judge John Hodgman podcast. Thank you. That's all my plugs. Awesome. Check all that out. Land's still available in paperback. Yeah. Medallion status. Check out might have to pull that off. The, might have to pull yeah. that off the shelves. Don't or don't don't order. Don't ever order hummus in Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> Medallions. Oh what, is it, what was what was that book again? Medallion status. True, yeah. stro- true stories from secret rooms. Got to pull it off the shelves. Wow. So oh, because there. I'm not diamond anymore. That's what I'm saying. <sighs> oh my! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, if you guys are leaving something to listen to, Mitch and I are going to be appearing on the Go Go Gober cast. Um, it'll be the episode will be out as of this episode's release. So check. And it do out. you remember what episode of Drew Carey we're doing? Uh, uh, we're doing we're doing the the one that was live. Yes, that's it right. It was the the one they that was aired live. It was actually kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, they they had like improv games in the middle of it, just mm-hmm. to like prove that they were it was spontaneous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good episode. Gober just like keeps saying like like what Ryan Styles should have said was this. It's like you're not as funny as Ryan Styles. Yeah. Stop second guessing his improv choices. In the middle of the scene. In the yes. middle of the scene, he'll like interrupt it. Oh, that's so Gober. Yeah. And then we're gonna get we're gonna like record, and then he's gonna be like, "Dudes, I lost your audio. Like this has happened before. This has happened so many times. I wouldn't be shocked if we have to re-record it. Yeah. But yeah. We'll see. Love you, uh, Gober. Anyway, check that out. And hey, check out John Hodgman on his actual thing up here. Uh, which is on Hulu, March 24th. Hey, that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoonman, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating! See ya! Bye! That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>